need some inspiration. Let's go get it. One of the things you got to do is you got to celebrate your successes along the way. All those small victories, all those wins. And I'm out here to do that. Get my feet wet. Blessed to be where I'm at. You know, I used to live in my car and I used to come here and be in that parking lot over here. And I used to wish I was in the spot that I'm in to this day. And I'm not where I really want to be right now. I'm definitely blessed and fortunate to be where I am. But I would say about four years ago, I wish I was doing what I'm doing today. And that's a victory, man. What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome to the internationally known Wake Up Show, part of the Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast here on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. You in here with the Bruce Wayne of this ish. The king of kings, the king of content, and the speaker of truth, yours truly. The notorious one, new, 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 a.k.a. New, new, new Mr. World Coach World. Alini, better known as the prognosticator, Coach Adamas. And you're in the Desert Storm bunker with none other than EWF, every woman's fantasy. And also known as the CEO, Niggero, of Fixes Binds LLC, the chocolatey Confucius, the Black Moses of this. The man with more nicknames than anyone in the game. The unbinder. The man who says and everybody believes got money. The boss of all bosses. The guy that they call CGA. Also, the ladies know me as Third Leg Greg and Gregorio Greybeard. The man that the Mexicans call No Trabajo because I ain't got no job. And all of the nicknames. Plus, CGAC got Allah and the 10 time demonetized champion of YouTube. Shout out to everybody in here. It is Wednesday if you're watching this on the playback. And Wednesday is dedicated to some blue chips. We're going to have that today. Today's show why you should get married today. <laughs> All right. Why you should get married today. Oh, my goodness, man. This is going to be an interesting oh, show. Humanity. You're like, man, who got this new, ninja? New, 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 new world <laughs> why you should get married today. All right. Uh, that's going to be the main event topic here. Do the benefits of marriage far outweigh all of these statistics that we give you on a daily basis for you sucker for love ninjas? You legacy ninjas. We're going to play the devil's advocates today. We're going to play the devil's advocate. We're going to see, in fact, if the benefits far outweigh the risk. Yes. And it just is like, hold up for a second, CGA. Wait a minute. Who are 
Aren't you the guy that always says he be at the junior college? He living better now. Coogee sweater now. All right, you living a free agent lifestyle. You going out here, ninja getting your passport. <laughs> we're going to play a couple of videos that have been on YouTube, and we're going to see. We're going to make the case for the brothers. We're going to see if our philosophy stands up. Yeah, we're going to see if it stands up to the benefits of marriage. Yeah, that's what we're going to do today, ninja. Hey, buckle your seatbelt. That'll be later on in the show. That'll be later on in the show. We're going to see it, man, because we're going to let him speak. Matt Walsh is going to make an appearance today. Also, who's going to make an appearance? Joe Smith's wife. Man, she is hit rock bottom, Ninja. She's hit rock bottom. Joe Smith's wife. She's going to make an appearance twice on today's show. We have Doom and Gloom CGA returns. We need some Doom and Gloom. We also have Straggle and Sniggle Theater. This is going to be a great Straggle and Sniggle Theater. We also have a couple of more segments here. Ain't Love Grand and all of that stuff. And then we'll wrap it up with Get Married Today. Mm. Question mark. Anyway, to contribute to today's show, dollar sign, the Notorious CGA on the cash app, Venmo. Coach Greg Adams TV, PayPal is paypal.me backslash Coach Greg Adams. And that be pinned to the top of the live chat on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel when you can super chat. New, 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 new on the Notorious CGA channel. All right, everybody's like, what's going on here? No, 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 no. No, we're going to see if the merit statistics are all false. If, if, if you guys are panicking here, should you get married today? Yeah, Hafiz is tuning in looking at my show like, I got that ninja. I got him. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah. Hafiz is crazy. Matt Walsh is going crazy. All the conservatives are watching my show. We finally got the CGA. All right. Mm. <laughs> all right. Little do they know. Little do they know. Um. Anyway, let's get to the earlier contributors to today's show. All right, we got our brother Martin, who beat in Albert Wesker today. Martin says, shout out to the coach gang. Hashtag bromance. Unpause. Bro, shout out to you. And speaking of bromances, I will not be talking about fudge packing ass Will Smith, allegedly. I don't even know how consecrators are covering this part of the show. All right, ninjas is out here talking about uh, Will Smith was getting packed fudged. All right, mm. I don't want to even, like I tried to listen to like one video of somebody talking about it, and I just couldn't. I was getting the heebie-jeebies. I was like, I'm not about to cover this segment. Ninja, I'm not a YouTube whore, Ninja. I do YouTube for fun and sometimes for funds. All right, but it's basically no job. Ninja, I'm not trying to be caught up. Ninja, I would not get out. Uh, if I did a segment on this, I would probably get canceled. Mm. All right. Ninjas, is, uh, they trying to explain it. I was like, Ninja, turn this shit off. I ain't got no time for this. By the way, the rumor's old. But, Ninja, I, yeah, that's old news. But, of course, you got to remember, there's a lot of old adults that were young. They don't even know the story. So it's new news to a lot of millennials. For a person my age, that fudge packing rumor was out long time ago, like probably after it happened. But I ain't about to be out here talking about no banana, you know, I ain't talking mm. about no banana in the tailpipe, a whole video. Ninja, I'm like, nah, the only, the only thing, the only thing that I want to talk about banana in the tailpipes is if I'm somewhere and I got Ling Ling folded up, all right? Now we talking. All right, come on, man. I'm only talking about young Ling Ling right here, some young hoe. All right, I ain't talking about two niggas. All right, pack and fudge, ninja. I ain't got no time. Look, I'm I'm trying not to get canceled, man. Let me let me continue with the show. Y'all consecrators way too comfortable talking about this shit, <laughs> right? Ninja doing hour streams on. Nah, ninja. Mm. I'll pass. <laughs> right. So if you came in here waiting for me to talk about that shit, ninja, I ain't about to talk about none of that shit. <laughs> All right, no homo. All right, anyway. Man, please. All right, continuing on with the show. That should just give me the heebie-jeebies just talking about it. All right, let's continue on. All right, Albert Wesker says marriage is insurance for the woman, but jail for the man. Mm. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. All right, shout out to you. Daniel McGee says, get your money up, stress-free living, XXs on the side. Yeah, shout out to XXs on the side. We call them our special friends. I just want to say... 
I'm glad you came along. Partner, I want to sing a song just for you. Because you're my special friend. Special friend. Yeah, that's what I'm on. I'm on. Listen. <laughs> All right. I only got time for my special friend. All right. What are we doing here? Charles Brown. Did they call you Charles? All right. He says, Coach, when you played Silence, You Fool, I was at work rolling. Shout out to you brothers here. I can't wait to use it on people, man, today because I'm ready for these fools. Random Thought says, Sucker for Love Ninjas have been wanting a topic like this. Hashtag free agent lifestyle for life. The Purple Pillars will be here today. The Purple Pill guys are coming in today. They're probably going to see this title and say, so there's hope. CGA is going to give us hope that I'm going to find my lover, homie, and friend. And I'm going to marry her and we'll be in romantic bliss forever. All right, we're going to do that real quick for the Sucker for Love Ninjas in here. Shout out to them. I appreciate them. And uh, let's see here. Let me check on these other places uh, uh, for any uh, for any updates. I got stuff. I got I got to clean my desk off. It's just it's not it's not a mess, but I can't. There's too many wires charging stuff right now. So I got stuff in the way. All right. I hope I don't spill my coffee this morning. Speaking of spilling my coffee, we got a brother in here with a sponsorship. He said this sponsorship is brought to you by the Pink Panther Investigation Agency. Shout out to them. Let's get them on the line. We've been after you for years now. Rest assured, we going to get that child support money, Ninja. He said, love you, coach. Shout out to you. Trying to come in, get that child support. Private investigator here watching going, okay, wait a minute. All right, he's reading off of this and that. They going crazy in here. They going crazy watching my show. All right, uh, what do we got here? Kaylin says, what's up, coach? Yesterday's stream on men, only one of sex was spot on. The differences in marriage. A man get, can't treat sex with his wife like it is disposable because he can't just get up and leave. And he could, and like he could, get other women, all right? Or like he could with other women. Mm. Women got this all backwards. Yeah, uh, you know, when women think about relationships, they only think it from their own perspective. So they never think about, I mean, there are some women in here that will tell you, uh, but, um, you know, they will tell you in a harsh way what it is. And it's pretty much like a male perspective way. But, you know, some women that can't deal with this truth and they can't deal with the tooth. No government name says, good morning, coach. I just watched the playback on yesterday's show. The woman that complained about men only dating to get the box did any of the women offer to pay 100% of all future dates in order to establish a relationship? Probably not. Nope. And I think, again, there's where the short-sightedness is. I mean, I think the 50-50, relation, 50-50 pay for dates for women is great because they can go on a date and they could take sex off the table right away by saying, nope, I'll pay my own way. Nope. All right. Or they could say, hey, I'll pay the entire date to get to know you. I want to get to know you better. If ladies wanted to really get to know a man better, then just pay for the date. All right. Take sex off the table and say, this is what we're going to do. This is how I'm going to get to know you. But nope. Hey, man, we know these women ain't got no money. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. Dead, flat, stony, broke. Yep. I've got $3.85 in my purse. <laughs> yeah, I'll shout out to Faith no more. She says, morning, coach. Liberal women are of the Antichrist. Please check out the video on the IG page. Um, porn, poems porn. Poems porn. And it says, what a weak man will do to a woman. And it says, the woman is speaking all facts. And the comments are from libtard women. And they make me want to barf. Yeah, man. Uh, you know me. You know me. I'm more conservative than liberal. But as Chris Rock said, I'm a little bit liberal on some things and conservative on most. But libtard women are automatically disqualified. Nothing turns me off more than a libtard woman. Now, I diss the conservatives. They're kind of phony and fake. But ninja, we all acting at the end of the day. I appreciate their phoniness. I can appreciate a phony conservative woman any day of the week. You know, they be dressed up in their Fox News, you know, 
one solid color, you know, c- cut off at the shoulder, you know, conservative covering the cleavage ass. You know, I could appreciate that act. You know, we all got to act our part. But libtard women are an absolute barf to me. Mm. All right, gag me with a spoon. These women are just, oh, I just can't stand liberal women. Like, I could, t- moderate women are different. They're just clueless. All right, they're clueless about anything. Moderate women are a waste of my space. All right, and they're actually the most egregious. But liberal women, oh my God. Everything they do is of the spirit of the devil for the spawn of Satan. All right, that's everything they do is in the spirit of evil. All right, in the in the, in the spirit of the Antichrist, liberal women. Now, man, they're, they're disgusting to me. They're disgusting. Human beings, they're disgusting. And they life be a wreck. All right, they life be an absolute wreck. And they be talking the most shit. All right, but they, they are definitely of the spirit of Lilith and Jezebel. All right, anyway, shout out to Macaroni Tony. Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. Shout out to you, man. And this is one of the reasons I don't deal with black women because, you know, most of them are liberals. They're extreme liberals. And they're, they're wiccas. They're witches. I mean, they tend to be more witches. And they'll be, so, uh, they be, I want to kill my babies. They be out there. And they run out there. They be running with their titties out. You ever see them in Spain? They be running around and the people be trying to hold on to them and they come out with their shirt off and they be having their boy shorts on with their little booties out, chicken cutlets out, and they be running out there and they be protesting with blood smeared, period blood all over them. And they be out there with their little titties waggling and then they be trying to arrest them and their titties be flying around. I'm like, Ninja, that's why ninjas got burnt at the stake, man. <laughs> you can see, man. They be having period blood on their face. We possess, we like kill our babies. You like, bro. Like, what's got into them, man? They got too much. You got too much time on your hands, and they be having stuff written all on their chest. <laughs> it be like, I'll be looking at them like, oh, the humanity. Oh man, I'm like these women are done crazy. Like, why take it to that level? Hold on. I told you I was going to spill my coffee, and I did it. <laughs> they be out here crazy. And you know what it is? I'm going to tell you what it is. We ain't talking about this today. But I'm going to tell you what got them this way. He said, run the disclaimer. You know what got them this way? Anybody know? Let me see if you guys can figure out what got them this way. All right, because there's only one thing that could get you to this place. All right, and there's there's nothing more than this. I, you guys are here. I'm going to tell you what it is, man. And it's sad when you think about it. This is what got them to it. And nobody's going to know. I mean, you guys should know it. It's pretty 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 figure, easy to figure out what got them to this position. And it is. Oh, okay. I'm on a 10-second delay. He said feminism Tiny hats. All right, Ninja, y'all trying to really get me in trouble. I'm not going to say what race, what people. We know I can't say that. Oh, uh, they not here yet. Um, Social media voting. No, that ain't it. That ain't it. Rights. No. I mean, these things, yes, but that's not what did it. No family. Nanny goat. These are all good. God's chosen. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Being born a woman. No, that ain't it. I don't have no good morals. You guys are close. You're getting there. Themselves. <laughs> All right. Their mothers. I'm going to tell you what got them there. Y'all didn't get it. I'm surprised y'all didn't get it. All right, because I got to get on with the show. You know what got them there? Fornication. Mm-hmm. Fornication got them there. Fornication. That's what got them there. Ninja, fornication. That's what got them there. These women are fornicators. <laughs> These women have been fornicating for a long time. All right. And they've been in the spirit of fornication, promiscuity. Right. And they've been, that's how they, that's how they first rebelled. Now it could have started off being something that they were violated, but the spirit of fornication is real. Right. We call it soul ties. We call it de- mating with demons. All right. Mating with demons. This is why they want to kill their babies. Because they don't like the people, they don't like who they are, they don't, they don't, they don't like who the men they, they fornicate with. So fornication got them there. This is my this is my opinion on it. 
And then when they get there, they they spill with the, they spill with the demon. They got the demon in them. Yeah. Fornicating at age 12 and 13 and 14. Like, because you can't turn 24 and go that crazy. Right? Go that crazy where you spear and period. Like, that's a whole, that's an old, another level of, 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 um, of liberalism, right? And so they go too far. They go to the spirit of fornication. And then, yeah. All right. So you got to watch out for that. That's rebellion. All right. Most of the time when they start that, it's rebellion. It's curiosity, but it's rebellion. All right, so they're doing something. And by the time they 18, they already didn't got many, many bodies. All right, let's get into this real quick. Uh, we do have some other contributors, but we about to get this show going. And we got Doom and Gloom CGA up first. Let's get through those real quick. Hey, hey Doom and Gloom CGA. All right, Doom and Gloom CGA is back. We got some things to report for you. Apparently, the migrants that came over to America have realized the American dream is impossible. Oh, say it ain't so. <laughs> oh, no, this is crazy. Doom and Gloom CGA fed up migrants who trekked thousands of miles to the United States already heading back home. Oh, man, they couldn't handle it. They gone. I don't know what they They said the American dream doesn't exist. Well, <laughs> look at them. They going back to the crib. They like, we going back to El Salvador. We're going back to Venezuela. We're going back to, uh, we're going back, man. We living in tents here in the middle of Chicago. All it took was a little bit of cold. All right. A little, a little snowstorm, a little mushy ass rain. And them ninjas is like, uh-uh. All right, I don't give a damn what kind of money you give me. I ain't living in this shit right here. Nah, of course the American dream isn't real. Yeah, it's real for some, but most of y'all ain't going to make it. Not with the mindset you guys got. The free welfare checks wasn't hitting. All right, they got a little bit of cold. Look at this ninja. He like, uh-uh. <laughs> Gloves, hat, scarves, out of here. What's the highest temperature it gets in El Salvador? <laughs> What's the highest temperature it gets? He like, uh-uh, what? Oh, fuck. This. We, get, we, not, we ain't staying in Chicago. Where's this American dream you talk about here? <laughs> he got that win. They call it the Hawk in Illinois. I believe in Chicago they call it the Hawk. All right, which basically is, I don't know. It's a, I, I can't tell you what the Hawk is, but I've experienced the Hawk. All right. And the hawk is basically a cold wind that is blowing. But because you're in an area where there's tall buildings, you don't feel that hawk. All right. And so you could be walking around. You're like, it ain't that cold. Now, what happens is you're going to walk past an alley. You're going to get to an intersection. And that hawk is going to come off Lake Michigan. And after you walk past that building, the hawk is going, whoosh. As soon as you walk past, wow, you're you going to freeze in spot, right? Oh, my Lord. All right, so they got that hawk, all right, and that cock, all right? And they knew they was going to be out here selling puss, too. They mamas is out here. When I start selling pussy, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Yeah, and the mama start, they didn't want to sell none of that peace leave. And so now they headed back. Say it ain't so, man. I, I wonder what American dream they were looking for. I'm just curious. What what America? Some Venezuelan migrants who trek thousands of miles to the U.S. in search of a better life are so disheartened. They say they're already headed back home. Michael Castigon, 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 age 39, he told the Chicago Tribune that he had enough after he, his wife, and teenage stepdaughter, uh oh, she could stick around for a couple of years. Spent five months sleeping either in a police precinct or a crowded city shelter in the now brutally cold, windy city. He also has been unable to secure a job permit and or enroll his daughter in a local school. This is going to be a disaster. Two of the main reasons, things they thought would be a better life in the United States. He says the American dream doesn't exist anymore. Well, we could have told you that. <laughs> we could have told you that, Ninja. We could have saved you a trip. But you had to see it for yourself. It says right here, there's nothing here for us. 
We just want to go home. He told the uh, Tribune of the South American country he earlier fled. Yep, there he is, Ninja. I don't think that's going to work right there, Ninja, right there. You might have to put your wife to work, Mr. Michael Castigon. It says right here, if we're going to sleep in the streets here, we'd rather be in the sh- sleeping in the streets over there. More than 20,000 migrants have made their way to Chicago since August 2022 and so forth, and many of them ended up sleeping at the O'Hare International Airport and at local police stations or in these streets. In these streets? Uh, yeah, brother. And look at them. They're like, yeah, we want to go home. It says right here, there's a 16-year-old woman says goodbye to her friend as her and her family waits to leave a Chicago police station and head to a Greyhound bus station ready to head back home there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I don't know what who told them it was going to be all better now, Coogee sweater now, but listen, we could have told y'all that long time ago, but you didn't want to listen. All right, let's get to this one right here, man. 53-year-old, I'm sorry, 54-year-old landlord appears to have deleted, all right, deleted three of his tenants inside of a house in Queens, New York on Tuesday after unpaid rent accordingly. Your rent's due, motherfucker. Wow, according to the police? Okay, landlords deleting tenants now over unpaid rent. Boy, it's crazy. Your rent's due, motherfucker. All right, landlords suspected of killing three tenants, stabbing over ongoing rent dispute. It is believed that it unfolded. It all unfolded after an ongoing dispute over non-payment of rent According to police, I'm in a bind what did I tell you guys? I told you, man, it's going to get wild out here. A 54 four year old landlord deleted his tenants. Allegedly officials say the victims, two women and a man were found inside a St. Albanes home somewhere around 715. They were pronounced deleted at the scene, apparently of stab wounds. <laughs> And it says right here, it is believed that it all unfold after an ongoing dispute over non-payment of rent. One woman was found on the second floor. The other two victims were in a bedroom on the basement apartment. Police say one of the women, believed to be 51 years old, was found face down on her bed. They say it's unclear if the victims were stabbed in their sleep. The landlord then turned himself into the 113th precinct where he was being held uh, with charges pending. And they say right here, it says police say only adults were in the home and there were not any children. The single family home had a finished basement and authority said it appeared to be well kept. Neighbors told the sister station that the landlord and tenant were courteous, but often kept to themselves. All right. Authorities are still working on the identity. Um, I'm probably going to say, listen, I'm not going to make any stereotypes here, but. Your rent is always due, Ninja. People, your rent's due, motherfucker. People don't really understand that landlords aren't rich, right? They might ho- own several properties, but they depend on cash flow to pay their bills. So people j- just get behind on rent and they just call their landlord and say, "I'm in a bind," you know. I'm in a bind. Just help me. I can't pay the rent today. I can give you a half. I can give you this and that. But they don't realize that these landlords have bills as well. They have tax assessor bills. They have utility bills. Oftentimes, they're giving you a discount or they're covering a part of it or they're holding it in their name. They have a lot of bills that they have. They have rate increases on a lot of variety of things that they're, you know, that you're not covering all of them and people don't understand the plight of the landlord. And um, sometimes they have a mortgage that might adjust in its rate. And so the payment goes up, but sometimes they don't want to kick the the tenant out. So they keep the rates low. All right. And then that's at the, uh, they keep the rates low, but you, I, 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 a lot of people don't understand that it, when they do that, they undercut all the other landlords, right? So other landlords raise their rent comparatively to how their um, expenses are. But if you're a landlord and all the other landlords see you keeping your rents low, they're going to come to you and say, why are you keeping the rent so low? You're making it hard for us to charge the rents that we need to charge to even cover our bills, So you even have that pressure as a landlord. You're like, oh, man, well, I want to keep my rents low because it's a struggle out here. And I'll cover the rest. But the problem is the other landlords are going to be like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm. Right. And so then he has that pressure. And so it's a catch 22. Then he starts hearing about your sob story. 
Then he starts saying, well, I couldn't make it. But he knows you bought, you know, $200 a week per month at the dispensary. So he also sees that as well. Well, I'm a single mammy. It's crazy. So anyway, watch out for that. And I probably was think that there's going to be much more of that. Uh, they do have some data. I don't know if I'm going to cover it today, but who's getting evicted in America? Well, it's black women, number one. All right, so mm. all right, so that is the no. Who is at the greater greatest risk of eviction? Um, we actually covered this. It says the face of eviction epidemic is mom and kids, especially poor moms from predominantly Latino and African-American neighborhoods. So there you go mm. right there. And it says right here, uh, noting that one in five African-American women who rent report being evicted at some point in their lives. Evic- eviction risk generally decreases with age and income, although the study notes that this is far from just a young person's problem with nearly 830,000 renters over 50 facing threat of eviction each year. What needs to change? People need to go get a job. Your rent's due, motherfucker. I mean... People be living like it's 2016, right? I just, I I used to do this in 2016. I used to make enough money. Now I don't. Now it's your fault that I can't afford to live. It's not 2016 no more, unfortunately. Next doom and gloom story. Ring the bell. Apparently, Wall Street, this is another sign that you could watch out for. Bloomberg is reporting. That Wall Street makes millions selling car loans to customers who can't afford to pay them off. Well, <clears throat> this particular strategy, you know, Wall Street people are the really the people that are tear, tearing America down limb from limb. Because they just treat us like numbers. So you either on the good side or the bad side. Uh, but uh, the reality is it says right here, Bloomberg Business is reporting. Packaging loans and reselling them as assets-backed bonds, a process known as securitization, has great appeal on Wall Street. Sounds familiar. Car loans made to people with spotty credit backed more than $37 billion of bonds last year, twice the value over uh, twice the value of decades before, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. And many of these subprime borrowers cannot pay. It hardly matters to investors. Multiple layers of protection, all but guaranteed that they get back their principal with interest in a country where most people rely on cars to get to work and transport their families. Lenders say they're throwing a lifeline to those with poor credit and few other options. All right. So here's. <laughs> and it's always these. Niggas always gotta show they all right. And so here we go right here. Um, Yeah. You know, this is the state of where we are. This is essentially subprime lending over again, except it's not houses, it's cars. So you needed a house to feel like you were living the American dream. Open up the subprime lending. And there were a lot of people responsible for this. Bill Clinton, to get us out of the recession, made it easier for people to want to be able to buy a house. And so his administration ushered in the loosening of tight, tight lending laws and uh, anti-discrimination laws. So a lot of people started to get subprime mortgages out of ignorance. They didn't really know what they were getting. And uh, that's a long story. But anyway, that backfired by about 2008. So it took a good 15 years for that to implode. Now, that they're saying the same thing about cars. Well, everybody needs a car. People live far out. Now everybody lives in the city. People need to transport their families. So we're going to open up opportunities for them to buy. But we ain't going to lose no money. All right, they might lose their car and their house, but we ain't going to lose no money because we have not mortgage-backed security, but auto loan-backed securities, and they're going to make money in their principal and interest, the Wall Street is, anyway, by packaging these loans together. If you did not see The Big Short, go see The Big Short, all right? It's a great movie uh, for those who don't understand the subprime, um, the subprime mortgage crisis that we got into in and that imploded, the bubble burst in 2008. Uh, We're essentially doing it again. As I told you, history repeats itself, right? It might not, it might not repeat itself, but it rhymes and people do the exact same thing. And this is going to cause a crisis because people are over leveraged and it's going to result in people's credit being ruined again. And then, you know, we'll have to go through another 15 years to try to recover from this, but there'll be another way for them to get paid. It is what it is. 
All right, it is what it is. He says we ain't gonna learn. We ain't learned our lesson. Well, it's really the consumer that hasn't learned their lesson, right? I I want to try to figure it out um, because I always look at people who take advantage of people like this. I don't look at them as bad. I don't look at them as evil as other people will do. Well, they well they swindled us. Well, Ninja, I, listen. I'm not gonna say what race, what people. We know I wait can't a minute, wait, say wait, that. Wait, Kanye, Kanye, sit, settle down. <laughs> settle down. Kanye always interrupted me. I'm not Taylor Swift, Kanye. But here's the thing. We know the big We know the big plan. Anytime you get in bed with the banks, anytime you're trying to make a deal, anytime you use credit, Ninja, it's going to be almost at your disadvantage. It's going to be a disadvantage to you. You're going to get it, and then you're going to keep owing on it, and then most people don't pay it down. We already know this. People carrying debt, uh, crazy. People out, uh, outlive their means. I think that's what it's called. And so with this mindset is because you're greedy, you call the other people that's giving you credit greedy. Yeah, they're greedy, but guess who's greedy? You. You're the greedy one. I'm just telling you. And that's you. That's how I look at it. You're the greedy person. You're the one that wanted the house and couldn't afford it. You're the one that wanted the car and paid a $1,000 car payment. But you're the one that got the extended warranty. You're the one that maxed out your credit cards. You're the one that took out the student loan debt. You're the one with $100,000 of debt and going to think you're going to pay it off. When? How? I, I don't understand it. I don't understand how you just uh, make the other person the bad guy. You're the one that shook the hand up for the deal. You're the one that signed the paper and agreed to it. How are they the bad guy? Mm. What did they do? They didn't make you sign the paper. Your greedy ass did. You were trying to outlive your means. You're trying to live better. You were, try you were trying to live a life you couldn't afford. So how is it the Wall Street people? And we already know who they are. We already know who they are. How are the banks the bad guys? We already know who they were, Ninja, but you were the one. So how in the world do you keep blaming all, putting it on them? It is what it is. You're the greedy one. Ninja, just be poor and broke. <laughs> right? Just do it. So anyway. I just don't understand when people get hyped up on that. But here's some more doom and gloom because this is the doom and gloom here. Apparently, this is GQ magazine, and they have Kim Kardashian on the cover. And apparently, the cover says the 2023 Man of the Year issue. Okay. Okay. Here we go right here. So, Kim Kardashian's on the cover of the 2023 Man of the Year issue. Uh, listen. All right, we already know her daddy or her stepdaddy was the woman of the year or something like that. And there she is. Oh, she's boss Kim. Oh, look at this. She's she's uh, she's the corporate boss. All right, look at oh boy. Oh, the humanity. Yeah. Uh, Mike Wall well, Mr. Wall Street here. Okay, she's a boss, entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy. I don't understand the her appeal at all, but you know. I also don't know the nanny goat, but I don't know if they're saying she's the man of the year, but they do have a lot of men here that they mentioned on the left. Tom Ford, Andre 3000, Damar Hamlin, Jonathan Anderson, Tim Anderson, Tim Robinson, Tremaine, Emery. John oh, who cares about all these people? Here? These are all nanny goat participants. Allegedly, I don't know. New, 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 new world all right, but this is more crazy shit that we have to deal with. 2022 man of the of the year. All right, last report here. The company behind the Miss Universe pageant files for bankruptcy after accepting transgender contestants. Everybody remembers this. This was some of the awkward thing here. I think the Miss Universe pageant was kind of going left. Uh, was it Donald Trump involved in the Miss Universe pageant? I can't remember. Maybe it was the Miss America. I can't remember. Well, nobody cares about these pageants anymore. And then what happened was, I think a transgender woman or man took it over. Remember this guy? He was a biological man. Then he turned into this woman. Then he had that weird video where he said, we're going to take over. I might have to pull the video up. I meant to pull it up. Uh, but then what happened was, in the last couple of years, they started doing the transgender people. And they started winning in certain countries. And then uh, it says, you know what I mean? And th uh, there it is right here. Oh, boy. Well, essentially, they went bankrupt. I mean, this is not even. Who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought? I know it probably was going bad to begin with. But there probably was some general interest in it. 
before they went goofy. New, 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 new All right, let me pull up the woman here or the man or the woman that was responsible for buying it. It was a cringeworthy moment. Let me see if I can pull it up here. All right, Jacapong. 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 Let me. <laughs> All right, Jacapong is her name. Jacapong. All right, let me see if I can pull up the uh, the, the thing, her cringe murder. Yeah, here it is. All right, now nah, they got music on this one. Jacapong. Jacapong. Let me see if I can pull up her speech or his speech. I don't even know what to call it, Ninja. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to diss. I'm just saying. All right, here it is. Hello, universe. <laughs> Hello, oh, the humanity. Hello, Hello, the Philippines. Hello, the universe. New, 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 new world order. All right, yeah, I can see how they went. Yeah. Uh, now, this yeah, be yeah, I can see how they went bankrupt. Can you see how that failed? New, 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 new world order. <laughs> I can see how that wasn't going to go anywhere, but apparently uh, bankruptcy does not mean bankruptcy does not mean that you're broke, broke. <laughs> it says right here, the Miss Universe pageant, uh, it says known for its inclusion of transgender contestants will still take place this Saturday. The Jacopon Global Group behind it filed for bankruptcy just days before the event. The Thai business tycoon, all right, and transgender activist Jaka Pong bought the organization for $20 million in 2022. Jaka Pong has had international fame as a celebrity, described this purchase at the time as a strong strategic addition to our portfolio. Yeah, she had a weirder speech, or he or she had a weirder speech that I'm trying to find, and it was straight up crazy. Where is it at? All right, they, they, they can't, this this speech was something else. All right, I can't find it. How come? How come it's not at the top of all the um, all the search engines? Okay, anyway, all right. I guess I guess the I guess we way. have it here. We're gonna go to David Rubin. All right, David Rubin's gonna give us the speech. Speaking of the cut services, I'm sorry. Shout out, oh, to, wait, man. Man. Shout out to Dave Rubin. Uh, yes, we're streaming on Rumble right now. Yeah, man, who thought that wasn't going to work? That, that was, that was going to, yeah, that was going to work out, Ninja. Hey, go ahead, man. I hope they're still rich, though. <laughs> I'm rich, All right, man. that's Doom and Gloom CGA. For all women, the women, the women. All right, the women. All right, that's crazy. Let me get to these super checks here. Wowzers, man, this world needs some healing. The world needs to be a better place. We got to get up, get up, get up. And da, 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 da. All right, shout out to Robert SV or SFDC. Salute CGA from Nairobi, Kenya. Great to consider a trip to Africa, Kenya, and link up with the Manosphere and Andre Kibi, he says, provide similar content. I think that's the guy I, I did play his video. Is he the African Kevin Samuels? There's a guy over there that kind of looks similar to Kevin Samuels. Is he the guy? I need to get over to Africa. And y'all need to set up a lot of them African models, Ninja. Wherever I come in, Ninja, I want the top quality African women. And they feed out. <laughs> and they feed out. All right, so if you can make that happen, that would be great. Soldier for God, a marriage license is not a receipt of ownership. It's not. So a lot of non-married people don't understand what marriage is. Yeah. U.S. Army retired. My opinion on getting married is having enough income to afford a spouse and kids in at least an upper or middle class neighborhood, $300,000 a year or more. If you can get divorced or get divorced, you are able to afford it. Yes. Uh, so... This is a tough question because it then makes it so that men, 95% of men can't afford marriage. 95% of men can't afford marriage at all. Uh, it's marriage for poor people. All right, we're going to have to discuss these things. And if you even have money when you get divorced, are you wanting to lose a lot of that money? Yeah, that's the one. All right, so that shout out to, shout out to that guy. I have shared one of his videos, so I would be cool to link up. And somebody said it's going to cost me money. Ninja, I ain't worried about that. 
I'm only in there for a minute. You think I got time to run game on a <laughs> on an African woman? I want the top quality Kenyan women. All right, come line on up. And just let me line on up. All right, I ain't got no time to talk to these women. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, but yeah, man, we got to talk about this because the price of marriage has gone up. And can't, what, you can't afford marriage now. All right, Vince Dean. Vincent Dean says the best game to spit to get a chick is to show up to the date with a marriage willpower PowerPoint chart. A marriage will PowerPoint chart. He says it works every time, all right? A marriage will. I think you meant the marriage wheel. All right, there you go right there. It says marriage will, so I was a little confused. But I think he means the marriage will. All right, Spoon Zaza says a few weeks ago, you showed us your Instagram with you not following any sexy models, etc. I unfollowed all the sexy baristas and model pages. What a difference in my focus ever since. Shout out to you, coach. Hey, man, guys, you guys got to take that. Try that. Try that for a second. And don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Um, a lot of people on your Instagram, you follow way too many sexy women. All right. I try to make it a point to not follow as many sexy women. It doesn't mean they're not going to appear on my page because Instagram is very, very good. Their algorithm is good. They will offer you sexy content. But my Instagram feed is dry. All right. It's so dry. I don't even want to go over there. <laughs> right. It's not, it doesn't, there's no incentive to me to go over there that often. And I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Um, some things I follow because it might help my show. Like I follow some gossip blogs like Hollywood Unlocked. And um, there's some other ones that I've been featured on. And so I follow them sometimes. But I, I follow all that stuff. You're going to find a dramatic difference on how you focus. All right. How, how much you can focus and get your shit done when you're not constantly barraged with all of these Instagram models and booty models and sexy women and women doing, you know, it's kind of annoying. And it, it, and it also, it also ignites your red pill rage because then you say all these whores, I mean, not all women on Instagram are whores. The majority of them are all right, but then you're going to have a negative perception of women and it's honestly going to be kind of feeding it. It's going to feed you. So do your best to, you guys got to, you guys got to not follow these people at least for a little while to see how much you actually, um, how much it changes your life. It gives you a lot more focus for sure. It's definitely an addiction and uh, you know, try it out and don't think you're going to miss any of these hoes because by the time you say, okay, I got back focus. I'll follow the hoes again. Some of the ones you thought you could never unfollow, you won't even remember their names. You know, you won't even remember them. All right. And you'll try to even follow some more. There's plenty of them on there. So you're never going to lose hoes. So. Mm. All right. Yeah. So get rid of those things, man. All right. Get rid of them. And, and if you really can't do it, just get rid of the entire app because you need to get focused. Shout out to Abel Returns to Eden. Yesterday was the Willie Lynch letter. Shout out to you, man. Yeah. Thank you, brothers, for that um, information. Weeland says, God bless you, coach. Wondering how you are going to persuade us to get married. Nope. <laughs> I know everybody's going, oh, wow. CGA is going to do it. Cool Jamie. 76 says, you must check in when you get to Africa, coach. You already pissed off the whole world. All right, man. I need, I need some of you African brothers when I get there because I know how y'all do. You'd be like, hey, brother, come on in. We got the security for you. Nobody will ever do anything for you, brother. Nobody will do anything. Nobody will touch your hair on your chinny chin chin, brother. We got you right here. Jump in this Jeep with all of the men in the militia outfit in the beret, and they got you, my brother, here. I meet you all the way down. I had the caravan over here. I go over here. You go over there and make sure you do not stop. The people are wonderful here. They love you, and they got to take care of you. Just follow these brothers here in the beret, in the green militia outfit, in the AK-47, in the AR-15. They take care of you very well, and get in there. I see you later, brother. Kiss you, brother. Brother, brother, God bless you, brother, CGA. Brother, take care of the brother right here. He's going to be here. He's our guest right here. As soon as I get down there, <laughs> soon as I get down there and them ninjas get me, because the ninjas in the beret don't know who the hell I am. Them ninjas going to start extorting me, picking my pockets, stopping for gas, 
stopping the bleed out of Danny Goat. Brother, they go start doing all kind of crazy shit. Ninja's going to be start running up, putting Ninja, give me your shit. As soon as I get there. Ah, oh, brother, they, what did they do, they? Hey, brother, hey, hey, here you go, day. Hey, how's it, how was your ride over here, brother, with the accommodations the way we had it, brother? Oh, man, brother, CGA, I come out leaking, sitting to the side, being robbed, extorted. <laughs> as soon as I get back, hey, nothing happened over there, huh? Why did it take you two days, day? Why did it take you two days, day, to get over here, day? Mm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Because the ninja's in the beret, like, ninja, we just going to jack this ninja. He got watches and jewelry and wallets, ninja. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> All right, the brothers took care of you, huh? Hey, the brothers take care of everybody today. Hey, I'm like, ninja day, man. You done left me out there hanging, brother. <laughs> mm. All right, anyway, man, look. He said they took my clothes, all that shit. I came in naked. I'm like, I thought y'all was going to take care of me when I came over here. I thought y'all was going to have some women. <laughs> y'all did just gave me green beret ninjas out here. Oh, hell no. Nah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is sad. All right. Them ninjas want me to check in now. Come on, man. Take care of me when I get over there, man. I want some African women. I don't want to get shot, skitty pop, pop. Mm. All right, man. Got me around there. African men, African men is mad at me, man, right now. All right. Anyway, let me stop, man, before I piss off the rest of Africa over there. <laughs> All right. Don't it just go get me, man. He said, you'll be fine. Okay. I want an African Queens. Shout out to our brother here with a co-sponsorship. Hey. <laughs> Oh, man, he says, my IG discovery page has pretty feet. 30-day break right now. All right, shout out to you, man. That's a co-sponsorship from our brother, man, Kyrell. All right, yeah, the discovery page on IG is a beast. It's a beast. Yeah, my discovery page is littered with women. I'm going to just let you know right there, right now, but I never really go to it. But, yeah, if you want a break, don't ever go to your IG discovery page. All right, so um, <laughs> like um, there's two pages that I don't go to, and if you go to these two pages, you a stalker. I consider you a stalker if you go to these two pages, and uh, there's one page I can't even get to anymore. I don't even know how to get to it, but it's the page where you can see everybody else's activity. If you use this page, you addicted to Instagram. Mm. You're probably a woman, <laughs> right? And I actually forgot about this page because literally I don't use Instagram like that. I'd use it just to see whatever I'm doing and try to post something or figure out what I'm not going to post. And uh, what happens is uh, I saw somebody the other day. I saw a woman and I was, where was I at? The Raiders game. And I saw a woman go through her IG page and it had the page where it's like everybody you follow, you can see what they liked. You know that page? Mm. I'm like, man, brothers, you a straight, you a straight loser. They got rid of it. I just saw somebody on it. I saw somebody on it. Anyway, I don't know how to get to it, but I saw her on it. She clicked on it and it looked like everything. It was looked like all this activity page. I don't even know how to get to it. Like you can click on it and see activity. I was like, that's number one. And then um, the other one is the discovery page. Like, what do you discover over there but titties and ass? Like, what do you discover? Oh, I wish I could follow these people. Like, that's not even relevant. <laughs> All right, that's not even a relevant page that you need to follow. Like, I mean, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize I needed to discover these people over here. Uh, shout out to Everett Walker says, your show on hypergamy was top five. Hashtag free agent lifestyle for life. Appreciate you, man. And I think I put up an edit of that one, too. Uh, did I get Shane? I did get Shane. But maybe I didn't. He says, you don't feel bad. One of your. Okay, yeah, that was last night. <laughs> he said, I don't feel bad. Feel bad. I try to stay active so I don't feel shit out here, man. Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you. I try to stay active so I don't feel much. 
All right, but I'm needing a, I'm going to need a, a a personal assistant at some particular point cuz life is catching up. Shout out to Kevin Sullivan says, "What's up coach? I seen a lot of ninjas getting married. They still ain't showing no teeth though. Nope, they ain't showing no teeth, man. Marriage is miserable." <laughs> Marriage is miserable. It's not for excitement. If you want mar- if you want excitement, do not get married. It, marriage is an obligation. My African brother says, I'm African, and you'll be fine, my brother. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, shout out to you, Ninja. All right, and by the way, African men and women, don't think that I'm only talking about you. I wouldn't go to Atlanta and let ninjas drive me around. So I'm just letting you know. It's not that you're African or I think you're going to do something to me. If I pulled up in Chicago and Minister Jap picked me up at the airport, and said, brother, I meet you over there, brother. The church is with you. Church check in. And he said, the church got you protected. And I pulled up with Minister Jap in Chicago. I would tell that ninja the same thing. Ninja, I ain't trusting you, ninja. <laughs> All right, shout out to Minister Jap. So it's not an African thing. Ninja, I wouldn't pull up to any town. Memphis. <laughs> so it's the same thing. You know what I mean? We got some of the craziest shit out here. So I'm already, I'm already messed around. L.A., Houston, if some ninja was like, come to Houston, we got you, brother. And then all of a sudden, take, take, take off. Mm. Ninja's like, let's stop at the bowling alley. We got you protected. We're going to shoot some craps. And then we're going to hang out with the hoes and then take, take, take off. And then, you know what I mean? Like, it could happen to anybody. If they could skitty pop, pop, take off in Houston, ninja, what the F you think they do to me? But I'm the OG and a bus back. Boom, boom, bus back. Boom, boom, pillar cap. Anyway, man, there's, there's a lot of cities I wouldn't roam into. So African brothers, don't be mad. I don't pull up anywhere. <laughs> right? So anyway, listen. All right. Anyway, I only pull up. This is the only place that I'll pull up. Anybody know? I got one place in every town that I'm going to pull up to soon as I get there. And I feel the safest I ever say felt all right and i will pull up to all these any day all day <laughs> he said somebody trick trick there's only when i get into every town i got to pull up here everybody knows what it is and i don't feel this is the safest i feel right here oh you guys know it yeah the juco when I pull up, and when I get to town, wherever the largest university is and the dorms, that's where I'm pulling up. <laughs> that's where I'm pulling up. So when I'm in Orlando, I'm near the University of Central Florida. It's automatic. It's one of the largest universities in the nation. Population 70,000. Mostly JUCO, flatback Supremes. I'm going to be fully comfortable there. (laughs) I'm going to know what's going to happen. I'm going to get my meat fixed. And I'm going to be able to go down to Orange Avenue and chill. That's it. Okay, daddy. That's the priority number one. Pulling right up. (laughs) Now serving C, C (laughs) CGA. All right, here we go right here. I'm coming in to fix this a couple girls' binds. Soon as I pull up, soon as I go to Tucson, I'm going to the U of A. Soon as I pull up in Phoenix, I'm going to Arizona State. Soon as I pull up to Fort Worth, I'm at TCU. Soon as I pull up to Dallas, I'm near SMU. <laughs> if your university is in the city, I'm not going. So if you got a city university, San Jose State, University of Houston, I'm not going. Where are we at, did you? Soon as I pull up in Detroit, I'm headed down wherever Michigan State is. I'm going down there, East Lansing. Soon as I pull up in Pennsylvania, I'm going out to Penn State. That's where I'm pulling up. Soon as I go to Chicago, I'm going to drive as far as I can until I get to the University of Illinois. All right, that's where I'm going to be at. Did you? That's where I'm going to be. That's where our meeting's going to be held. That's where I'm going to be feeling the safest. That's what's going to happen, Ninja. I'm going to just let you know. All right, man, let me stop. 
Faith says, Coach, stop speaking all this truth. They can't handle the truth. Too many blamers and complainers in the world. Not enough accountability takers. Facts. And she was talking about what I was talking about, about the mortgage crisis and now the car loan crisis. All right. Uh, shout out to Faith says, I fell for the okie doke myself, went to school for my accounting degree, and I'm working in my field, making good money and paying off my debts. No complaints. Sometimes it works. It works for the people who actually work the system. That work the system, Ninja. King Smith says the actual King Smith for the creation of the private investigator blocking app. Great topic today. Shout out to you. Indeed. Shout out to you. All right. Do me a favor, man. Hit the like button. I got to pay some attention to a very important issue. But until then, enjoy this commercial. Many women say they are finding it very hard to find a man who makes as much as they do. That the country's declining marriage rate is due to the lack of financially eligible bachelors. Researchers say they are seeing a trend of women dating down, which what? means, you know, dating a man down. who... <laughs> this is just the reality of it. So women, you know, we're more educated now. We're going to hold off on the baby making. We're going to hold off until we get that great job. Really career driven. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with hoping that there's someone either on your level or higher than you. So before, right, it was okay when the man made more money to be the one to buy everything, to do, you know, treat you and all this other kind of stuff. And now that you make more money, you can't be that one because you're dating down. Dating down. Mm -hmm. I hate that. What is that? If there's a responsibility that comes with making more money, accept it. You wanted to make more money. Right. You know, are you going to find many men out there that makes as much as you do? Actually, I can do bad by myself. Left to say. All mm -hmm. right, time now. 5-11. Let's <laughs> Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Strike with Snickle Theater, man. We back in here for the business, man. Hit the like button on today's stream. Strike with Snickle Theater, man. The best of the best of the edutainment here. Let's get into it. Uh, this should be an interesting video for you. We do have a straggle that is making some sort of soup. All right, soup, 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 soup. Okay, hold on for a second. Come on, play the video. Where's the woman at? She was making soup. All right, my video won't work today. Hold on for a second. Oh, here it is. You say All right, so we got, this is, I don't know, man. Name the city. This is somewhere in Atlanta, Georgia. Here we go right here. All right, here we go. Uh, we got a, guys, this is a woman. I just want to let you guys know. I believe this is a woman. It says, my mom will make anything into soup. She's happy I'm a vegan. All right, here we go. Hey, what kind of soup you making? Pork chop soup. And that's the oh, pork chop you right there? You boil the pork, pork chop? The pork chops first. Yeah. Okay, yes, ma'am. Then you chop up your spaghetti, I mean, your potatoes. What, what's in that? Oh, uh, it's uh, some potatoes and some green beans. Uh-huh. It's a little bit of everything up in this motherfucker. So they're going to eat it. Go oh, the humanity. I don't know what's going on here, man. I I, I don't I'm I'm quite confused. What's that mean? I'm try I'm quite confused as to where we're going. Wait like, a minute. Who are you? Oh man. They gonna eat it, Nana. You eat that? I don't know. Oh man, this is hey man, uh, ladies. When they say you're going to die alone, they were wrong. Y'all going to die in a cluster. Right? <laughs> hey, hey, listen. They be like, black women going to die alone. Hey, Kevin Samuels, rest in peace to my brother. I think you had it a little wrong. Ninja, they're not going to die alone. They're going to die in a cluster, a two-bedroom apartment with four generations of women. I mean, they got Nana, which is Grand Nana. They got Mama, Big Mama. They got two strags. And they got a, I'm sure there's a baby. And the damn fire detector going off. Oh, my. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> You're going to die in clusters. Ay, ay, ay. You know what I'm going to be dying of? I'm going to be dying uh, in getting the, I'm going to die how I came in. I'm going to go out how I came in. In between somebody's legs. All right, let me get in here. Hi, yeah, yeah. Even Nana got a bonnet. What are we doing? Sin, are you eating? It? Oh, you eating? I ate the string beans. You ate the string beans, chicken. What? What else in the in the pork chop soup, ma? Oh, it's. Water? Well, let me see. Let me see. 
Show the camera. Show the people. What? That's the pork chop? Yeah, I boiled it. And I took the fat off of it. What? What? I got three beans and potatoes in here. Now I'm going to add my little carrots up in here. Oh, okay. It's going to be all right. I'm going to worry about it. Oh, the humanity. Hey. Hey. <laughs> this is so wild. What are we doing? We've lost our order here. <laughs> this is, I don't even know what to say. Let's go on to the next video here. Ay, ay, yay. Let's go to the next one, man. Uh, That definitely is poor folk food, but that ain't here. Hey, listen, make the soup, baby. Okay, we got a comedian here. Let's see what he has to say. Girlfriend moved in with me, so we have sex, and uh, as soon as we're done having sex, I wish that she would fucking evaporate. (laughs) (laughs) No? All right, no, you guys are right. I hate playing Xbox by myself, dude. Oh, fuck. I love having her around all the time. Fucking turn it on lights. (laughs) <laughs> asking me to hang out no. all right and so uh this is kind of what i was talking about yesterday all men want sex and how men are raised this kind of validates the point that i make in a comedic way the point that i make is that men are trained for at least a decade of women being absent after arousal and after finishing arousal right we're trained with women being silent we're trained by turning off the woman after we finish looking at prawn or close the magazine and put it back under our bed we're trained with that with women but unfortunately a lot of guys get into a relationship for access to sex and then after the sex is done he wants to turn the woman off right we think of women as robots right and but then when the woman wants her needs met because her needs aren't met through sex all right we tell you they don't have sex for pleasure all the time most of the time it's for you to bond, co- to connect, to leverage, to get something, to get paid, to apologize, to you know want something, to manipulate. They have sex for a variety of reasons. Then they say they want something more. Cuddle, attention, talk, right? That's what they want in exchange for sex. So when they just be like, oh, man, if you hit it right, guys, some women, like all women, every time they have sex is not for pleasure, especially married women especially women in relationships. It's a kind of like a thank you for putting a roof over my head type shit. Okay, now that we've done that, you got to do what I want to do. You got to emotionally attach. You got to aftercare me. You got to insure me. You got to feel me, make me feel secure. You got to make me think I'm the only woman in the world. And yeah, they want to cuddle and cry for a little bit and, you know, plan their life out and get you to make false promises. Now, this guy is hitting that nail on the head because he's like, well, after I have sex, I wish you would evaporate. Yeah, <laughs> it said evaporate. And that, that that is how men are trained with sex. All right, now, this isn't all men, but yeah, this is almost all men almost all the time. Okay, so in this one, somebody said it's a loss leader. Sex is a loss leader for women. If they know they can get something out of you, if they know they can get you to connect, they'll, they'll give it to you, but it's not always for their pleasure. And most guys can't pleasure women anyway, so they have to find another way to, to, to get that connection. Now, this guy lady basically saying, I wish he would evaporate. Holy mackerel. Mm. <laughs> no, we hang out. I'm just. And by the way, they also get uh, half sex to get information from you. All right. Samson and Delilah. All right. Here we go. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to. I'm not used to hanging out with a woman all the time. I'm nice to hanging out with women. I don't have any female friends. I'm more of a having a good time type of guy. (laughs) My girlfriend moved in with me, so we have sex. And uh, as soon as we're done having sex, I wish that she would fucking evaporate. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yo, hey, man. And uh, I, I wish I wish more men would be honest about this. And I wish more women would understand this. All right. That's what it is. That's all it is. And as he see, as you saw, he thought cohabitation would be good for him. And now he realizes he's paying, right? So when I say all men pay, this is an example of the frustration is now he thought he was going to get free sex and be able to get sex and do what he wants. But now that's not the case. So now he's realizing, oh, I just made a bad deal. I'm paying with what energy, attention and time. And he's like, this is. This is the worst deal. Again, you'll never convince me that the junior college ain't a good deal. All right. It's the ultimate cheat code away from all that because that's what you're getting out of it. You're not getting the sex. Anybody can get the sex, but you're getting there to evaporate. (laughs) 
That's what you're getting. You're getting the non-payment of the energy and attention and time. You're like, evaporate. Here you go. Evaporate. I got money. <laughs> you're not dealing with the bullshit on the back end. I mean, you know, ninjas are still not get it, but that's mostly broke ninjas that live above the corner store in the apartment with the exposed heater, right? Yeah, you in the single pane window. Yeah, you. Mm. All right, but uh, anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, let's get into the next point of the conversation. Uh, ninjas now when uh, women post their lifestyle on IG. All right, here we go right here. I bought this car. You want to take no videos by yourself. I bought this car. Put it on my face. Did me. I made the purchases. So I decided to take a walk through the park. It's so cute here. It's so my idea, too. Let me see. How come every time you post a story, I don't be in the cut? No, nigga, she's with me. She is with me. You cut it off. I'm about to smash this. I paid for that, big dog. Don't even worry about it. It's all me. Keep scrolling. All right, so, oh, man. I mean, this is somewhat normie humor. This is somewhat normie humor. And um, I just can't go for it. I get it. It's a nice little skit. And, uh, yeah, Ninja, Ninja's is down bad. <laughs> Ninja's is down bad. Like, yo, and, and it's a skit on their part. So we do have to make it aware that they're doing that for, you know, a little bit of, a, a little bit of chicken mock, a little bit of normie humor. Uh, but there are people like this. You know, there are men like this. Post me in your videos. You never post me. Oh, man, I found out to be, that's low level. That's low frequency. As they call it, low frequency. Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, this is kind of a, probably a skit as well. It looks rehearsed, but this is something that I talked to you about. And if you, when you hear it and you see it, you're going to realize that CGA was right. Every person you've ever slept with. I can bring out the list. So you're one of the first people to ever see this. Okay, so I have it by list boyfriend, people I've made out with, people I've kissed but not made out with, people I've slept with with chronological order, people I've given head to, people that have me out, people that I've done anal with, People that have actually made me come oh, and order at least the best sex with notes. <laughs> Here, this is the, the scroll. That's, and that's the just the anal section. You're a real American hero, you know that? Yeah. You should be able to board planes first. I salute you. Name every person. Not my girl, coach. Not my girl. Um, Ninja, it's getting slim pickings out here if you want virgins. Ninja, these women are getting ran through out here. <laughs> These women are all getting their sexual experience, and they're starting early. They're starting early. I'm talking about early teens. So here you go. These are your future wives. You know who's also on the list? Him, daddy. They sugar daddy. They didn't tell you that. Okay, daddy. All right. They didn't tell you that, too. Some ninja that got a little. I got money. All right. Some ninja that they. Got to get my bag and run. All right. Your future wives are out here, ninja. The days of old are gone. Ladies, I know there's some women out here, but I'm a virgin. Ninja, the, the days are older gone. And to, to me, once they hit 28, it's a wrap. 28. It's slim, slim pickings by 28. It's too late out here, man. And so here we go right here. We have uh, this woman out here. And, and by the way, Van Glorious. This is protected by the red, the black, and the green with the key sissy. But let's take a look. This backs up everything that I say. Look at the woman that we're talking about. Sogmeister got her. She's a plump pog. She's plump. She's not that attractive. She's way uglier without her hair done. She's a five. And I'm being generous. She's not ugly. She's just regular. And guess what? It don't stop them. Again, the whole Chad and Tyrone mythology says Chad and Tyrone gets the, go the good girls, the top girls. And I say, no, they don't. They get easily the five, six, and sevens. When there's really no sevens. They get the fives and the sixes easy. They get a little bit of work on the eights. And the nines and tens are who they really want. But they can't really get them either because they're monetized. Or they'll if they get one, they're wrapped around their little uh, finger. Chad's wrapped around her little finger. And Chad, uh, yes, dear. Okay. Now, this woman regular degular. And she's been ran through more times in the Holly Tunnel. And she also does what? Keep notes of everything. Women keep notes, diaries, videos of everything. You guys do not understand it that they do this. 
if they have a situation with you, another person knows. So not only do they keep their notes, they tell another person. This is why they always talking. So whatever you've done with the woman, she has written that shit down with the dates, what happened, how long it took, how much you busted. If you filled up their guts, they got the they got everything. They don't let nothing go by. So I always tell you the Hall of Records uh, clerk. Yep, I always tell you, you better make sure you clean up your act when you're dealing with them. Because when it comes to it, if you ever get on their bad side, they got the data. And they got your picture, your name, your social, every goofy shit that you said. That's why anything you talk, anything you say to a woman, you must make sure that if do you want this information out. Do you want to give them this amount of information? They're going to come back and use it against you at some point, if need be. All right, here we go. You've ever slept with? I can bring out the list. So you're one of the first people to ever see this. Okay, so I have it by list. Boyfriend, people I've made out with, people I've kissed but not made out with, people I've slept with with chronological order, people I've given head to, people that have given me out, people that I've done anal with, people that have actually made me come. An order of least to best sex with notes. Oh, Jesus, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. This should not surprise you. This little goofy Millie Mouth muskrat over here, what that mouth do, what that barbecue. It's barbecue in there. Um, so this did not let this surprise you. And, of course, that's your future wife. You're going to marry her, and she's going to have all of them notes. <laughs> she's going to have all them notes, and she'll be back referring them. I'm going to tell you how I found that out. I always tell you the story. A girl I was dealing with, she was dealing with two Gregs. Now, I knew about this prior to her revealing something that happened to me she, via text message. She was texting me, and the, when she was texting me, she thought I was the other Greg. Now, again, I already knew she had another Greg in her life, but I didn't give a damn. Like, at that point in my life, I was like, I don't care what women do. I just care what they do with me, and I'm going to make sure that they are not, you know, doing anything extra risky. So when she was texting me, she was texting me some information that I could not recognize. She was giving me details about something that was clueless to me. So I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she was like, what are you talking about? (laughs) And I was like, wait. I was like, do you sure you got the right person? And then she had to go back and realize. She said, oh, I I I thought I was talking to the other Greg. But in that conversation, she was talking about stuff she had in her notes about stuff that happened a few years ago. And she's like, no, I have it saved here in my notes app on my iPhone. That blah, 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 blah. Mm. And I was like, you keep this much detail in your notes? Yes, they do. Yes, they do, guys. They all do a variation of this. Diary, TikTok videos, videos that they recorded. If you if you filmed a video and she was dropping neck or you got a video of her having sex and you're like, oh, she probably deleted it. No, she did not. She got that video. So understand that this is how they work. This is something you shouldn't be mad at. This is something you should be aware of because this is going, this is what they're going to have on you. And God forbid you become famous. God forbid something happens where she has to use this against you. Uh, But, It's only for, and these are your future wives as well. So if you marry a woman and she's 28, she went to TCU, she went to ASU, Arizona State, she went to uh, Chico State, she went to UC Santa Barbara, and you marry her down the line, she still got notes of all of the men that she didn't have rode the carousel. (laughs) Just understand that that's how they work. Straggle and Sniggle Theater presses on. Apparently, we have two straggles that say that whoever, some ninjas, left them at the club with a $10,000 bill. All right. Okay, so. Okay. <laughs> oh, so they sniggling. All right, so I guess when I come to Kenya, this is what I'm going to expect. Uh, so these hyenas here are laughing at the fact that they got stood up They probably had all the party. They thought they was going to make some money off some rich ninjas. And then they got left at the club uh, with the $10,000 bill. And they laughing and sniggling. But it sounds like somebody going to take it out that ass. Because ass, gas, or cash is how I work. Mm. And if I owned a restaurant and them two hyenas was in there sniggling about $10,000 worth of alcohol, 
I'm going to take $10,000 out your hide. I'm going to get that money, or you're going to be vacuuming floors on your hands and knees like Donna Summer, or you're going to be in there cleaning and busting suds. All right, you're going to be doing something. I'm going to get that money up out of you, Ninja. Mm. It ain't going to be that funny. You ain't going to be sniggling. Yeah, they'll get all the drinks. You ain't going to be sniggling by the time I get done that your, your knees going to be. <laughs> mm. Where your money at? Get your bag out. All right, you don't know how to pay? You ain't got no cash? Well, ass or gas is going to work just fine. Ninja. Hey, look, everybody got something to do. Everybody got something to do. Everybody can pay some way or the next. All right, taking it over here, we're going to have Joe Smith's wife. Man, Joe Smith's wife has hit rock bottom. All right, her whatever she saw in her promotion for her OnlyFans has probably not worked out, and we can honestly say that she her MILF prong career is, all right, is not going well. Let's take a look at Joe Smith's wife. If you don't remember, she's the NBA, former NBA player wife that uh, restarted her early fans. Well, let's take it from here. With the milk with the older women, that's what you really learn. Oh. I heard baby alien was in here. Now, gentlemen, this is an example of women when they say they got options, they ain't got no options, Ninja. They lying, <laughs> right? Especially older women. Never believe them. Remember, she left to start her OnlyFans career. She was going to make it big. She was going to help support the family. But at the end of the day, she about to get her back blown out by baby alien? Ninja, you got... Oh, the humanity. Man, you got to be kidding me. Is this how fast and far she's fallen? This cannot be real. This can't be real. Come here, little puppy. Oh. Hey, baby. Oh. Hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. Oh, my God. Wow. Mommy can't to take care of that baby, baby. You ready for this? Yeah, You ready for this? Of course. Yo, another surprise. I can't believe it. Oh, man, Ninja Boy. Hey, yo, hey, man. Hey, hey, man, listen. Man, when your wife acts up, you got to just cut her loose. Cut her loose because she thinks she's going to do something. She thinks she got to go out here and make it big. She thinks she's going to be stronger than the big. And so, yeah, yeah, these hoes winning. And <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, so it, it, ladies, is this what you imagine? Is this what a, her only career? This is what the OnlyFans career you imagine? All right, I'm gonna make it big on OnlyFans, guys. This is what you gotta have to do on OnlyFans, right here. This is what you gotta have to do. You're gonna have to get your back blown out by baby alien. Mm. And once this scene is done, you are forever tainted. This money gonna be so short. This is gonna be this is gonna be the shortest money you ever seen. That money going to dry up. Whatever they gave you for that, however many you're going to run these clips on your OnlyFans, this money's going to dry up. As a matter of fact, we do have more film footage today on the It Is What It Is podcast. I don't know if I can share it, but this is Cameron. This is Mace, and I don't know who this woman is, but the It Is What It Is podcast, I'm going to share a little short clip here. Apparently, Joe Smith's wife is giving Killer Cam a massage. This happened this morning. Today. I don't like now to laugh. Like this. <laughs> Fair use. <laughs> What's going on, oh. fellas? What's happening? Say hello to the babes. The body rub oh. babes. You can't see it. Hey, yo, kid, what's happening? <laughs> wow. wow. How you doing? Hey, yo, kids, what? There she is. There's Joe Smith's wife right there. And let's take you, let's skip it because I can't play the whole thing. Killer Cam is getting a massage by Joe Smith's wife. Fair use. Yeah. Fair use. Yeah. You set this up. You. <laughs> This is oh man! <laughs> yeah. No, I really am good. I, I am. Oh, ladies, 
You better, you better stay with your man. Ladies. <laughs> oh man. She about to be running around lapping up as much nut as she can. Yeah, that brother's starving. She going to be lapping all the way until she's 70. All the way until she's 70. I hope it. This, In these streets. I hope whoredom is going to work out for you. I hope being a skeezer for the rest of your life. Why do I have to work? I am sexy. I am hey, sexy. gentlemen, if you're a young guy, I want you to listen to me. And I, and I know every so-called red pill content cr creator says this. Guys. Time is on your side. Ninja, you win in the end. We're going to talk about this when we get to the marriage conversation. Uh, guys, time is not on their side. It, time is on your side. I know, Ninja, you going to be single and lonely. No, they going to be single and lonely, Ninja. Time runs out on them. And, uh, ladies, you better acknowledge this truth because there's no way you cannot acknowledge it. All of these women who used to be top women, top women, Ninja, they nowhere to be seen or heard from. I've seen women come and go. And most of these women still single to this day. <laughs> right? And this is what happens. I'm going to go big. I'm going to go do. I'm going to go do. How much? How many of these humiliation rituals she's going to have to do for to get her reward? This is unbelievable. And she's showing her teeth. Show teeth. How much more does she have to humiliate herself? And Joe Smith's name. Man, the best thing she did, the best thing she did for Joe Smith was do this. Now he can, he can move on with his life. And if he's having financial troubles, this ain't going to solve it. All right, this type of actions right here, this ain't going to solve it. So she's going to go out there and do this, and then it's going to end. It's going to dry up. She's going to have to do this for the rest of her life. It's going to be disgusting. Joe Smith, on the other hand, his, the amount of money that he's going to need to survive is going to be minimal. He can live off very little. The pressure is going to be off of him. He's no longer going to have to support her. That's where the majority of his income is coming from. So he's trying to keep up. He's trying to keep up to keep her happy. All right. And now he doesn't have to go on out there, release, and he's going to live off of $5,000 a month. <laughs> right. That's it. She's going to be doing chic parties, yachts, getting humiliated. This is going to be bad, guys. It's never a good option. And the one of the reasons why I tell women, y'all better get in line as early as you possibly can get in line all right get in line if you don't get in line and you're gonna play this out to to the end of time it don't work it don't work somebody said joe smith broke he's broke compared to what he used to live like i bet you if he got his ass a one-bedroom apartment he wouldn't be broke if he got a one-bedroom apartment for five years five years some people saying who was Joe Smith. I know I realize a lot of people don't uh, uh, know the entire story here. But Joe Smith is a former NBA player, former number one draft pick. And uh, his wife is the woman that we were featuring. She ended up saying there was a viral video where she said uh, she revealed that she had an OnlyFans for a year. Okay, so Joe Smith can go to get a one bedroom apartment and live off and make three thousand five. I'm sure he can go somewhere and make three to five grand a month. He can live off of that. Parlay that, stack that, and he'll be good in five years. <laughs> he don't need a big house no more because she needed the big house. He don't need a new car no more. He's, how old is Joe Smith, 40? He don't need new cars yet. He can go, he can go minima, minimalize his life. Let me see what his age is. He can go minimalize his life not, because the reason why he couldn't afford his lifestyle was because of her, because of your wife. Let me see here what his age is. Uh, he's about my age, 48-ish. Yeah, 48. 48 years old. I'm sure he can make somewhere and make 10 grand. See, 10 grand wasn't enough for all of them. It wasn't enough for him and her. <laughs> right? Now, if you take her out of the equation, 10 grand is enough. And I'm sure he can, he can vacuum up 10 grand somewhere. I'm sure he can get 10 grand a month somewhere. But 10 grand wasn't enough for him and her. 10 grand would be a, a hell of a lot of money. And he don't have to deal with her bullshit. Again, all men pay. Mm. Yeah, does he have his NBA pension? Man, please. He'll be good without her. That's the best thing that could ever happen. <laughs> yep. He could coach. He could do some TV analysis. He don't talk very well. He can, he can go do some basketball camps. 
He could keep the car that he has, not buy a new car. It's crazy. But it's the woman that he can't keep up with. But now that's going to be the best thing that happens if he divorces her. Hopefully he does that. Straggle and sniggle. Presses on. And this is a sad video right here. The state of the millennials, the zennials, and Gen Z. Let's take you to it. Oh, the humanity. Oh, ninjas is ninjas is ninjas is rock hard looking at this. Oh, oh the humanity. Man, send it. Again, hey bitches, hey man, they gonna chase that bag. I do OnlyFans. Oh my goodness. Oh my lord. What are you kidding me, man? Hey, they be like, I do OnlyFans. I do, uh, you know, I don't do really do prawn. I do, I do, uh, what do they call it? <laughs> I can't remember what they say. They say, I, I don't, I do, I don't do fully nudes. I do very much. It's uh, very fantastic. I can't remember the phrase they use. Uh, anyway, Lana Rose said it the other day, man. Look, man, these are your future wives. These are those strong and independent. These are the empowered women. This is uh, this is empowerment. This is empowerment right here, ninja. These are the women that say they don't get married and settle down. These are the women that say, brothers, what do we? Oh my lord, ninja. Hey yo, chill, son. Hey yo. We we don't have any more code. These are the women that's gonna be like, why these guys don't want to commit? And that's you. <laughs> Jeez. Oh no. And white women for you, man. The white women be doing shit like this too, man. Oh my lord. And then just ring the bell. <laughs> tasteful, thank you. That's what I'll admit. Yeah, I only do tasteful content. I don't do prawn. I do tasteful content. This is tasteful content right here. That's the word that I was looking for. I'm doing tastefully nude. I don't do say I don't do this. This is only, this has got to be somebody's OnlyFans or try to get somebody over there, ninja. Oh. When we say, when we say they be going hog, y'all ninjas be going hogging, here it is. Here it is right here, man. This is the ultimate straggle. I don't think it almost, can, I'm sure it can get worse than this, but uh, yeah, man. Like how much, oh no. All right, my boyfriend just got home. Oh, this is somebody's boy, girlfriend? Oh, hold up. My boyfriend just got home. My boyfriend just got home. My boyfriend. Oh. Look at this, man. She got a mental illness. Hey, mental health is real. <laughs> Do you think I'm beautiful? Oh, no. Uh, Do you want some mud? It actually feels kind of nice. Oh, okay, actually. Oh, the humanity. But I tell you about them pale pink toes. But I tell you about them pink toes and them libtards. But I tell you, man, they be on some cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs ish. They be, and I bet, and see, here's the thing. I bet you when they go outside, they're the lovely couple. Nobody knows none of this stuff. And he can't tell his family or nothing. He'd be like, man. And so he has to put up with, do you think I'm beautiful? Yes, honey. Why? Because he gets pudissy from her. He gets two pieces of peace leave a week. And that's better than going out here to date. So they stay together. Am I beautiful? Sure, honey. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Behind closed doors. <laughs> Where's the picture right here? All right. Hold on for a second. Behind closed doors. They be doing shit like this. <laughs> this is... Oh, the humanity. Oh, man. Straggle with Sniggle Theater, man. We out. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me. You can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky. Come get high with me. That's a deal, right? Wow. Well, 
I hope you guys are warmed up for today's show. We got a new, new segment coming up here. Uh, what is the new segment coming up here? Well, I don't know what it is. Oh, Ain't Love Grand. We're going to talk about that later in getting into the main event. Hey, man, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit that like button. And stay strong out here, gentlemen. Stay strong. Don't get desperate, man. You win in the end. Shout out to Sheldon Ross. But coach, these hoes winning. Exactly. Remember, they was trying to tell me that. These hoes winning. Shout out to Kyrell. I'll give you another one. He says, my IG discovery page has pretty feet. 30-day break right now. Shout out to you. Yeah, the discovery page is kind of whack. These hoes winning. Ah, man. Hey, ladies, are you in here winning? Are you in here winning? Nah, don't lie to me. Shout out to our brother, Derek W. He says, I went to use the bathroom last night and my girlfriend bursted in and grabbed her phone off the counter before I closed the door. Fellas, beware. These women are so sneaky. Some of these things, man, uh, these are things that play on your mind when you get into relationships. I kind of avoid all that because it's a distraction. Right, and you then you got to say why she do that. That was kind of funny. If you want to confront her, this is funny acting. Now, when they do these things, it doesn't mean they're cheating. It doesn't always mean they're cheating. Uh, we have to understand that. But it is kind of weird to do something like that. Um, and you're like, why, why did you? Why did you make that sudden move? And then you have to have the conversation, and it can be somewhat disheartening what you're gonna find out. And women keep all details in their phone. Um, If you have a girlfriend or a wife, she has a video of her sucking a guy off in her phone. There's a 95% chance because I got the same video of somebody's wife doing it, all right? Now, she wasn't your wife yet, all right? But I got videos of women doing some crazy shit on the, and, and also, they're also doing things like talking about you, sharing information about you. They have past information about their boyfriends or their husbands or their baby daddies, all right, um, information about you and details. So it's not always cheating. They might screenshot ninjas with six packs. All right, they might be talking, uh, uh, commenting or DMing with another person. They haven't started to physically cheat, but they are emotionally cheating. There could be a lot of stuff going on. Um, and um, this is something that everybody has to deal with. And it's just a reality. These are the things you pay with. When, when people say they're getting it for free, these are the things that really do distract you. And it, it bumps you off your game if you don't have this type of honesty in your relationship or you don't have security in your relationship. And uh, for me, I'd rather be straight up and honest. And uh, if I feel like a woman can't handle this honesty, I have to let her go. But you ain't never going to be the only one. I don't believe in monogamy. You know, this is what it is. Doesn't mean I'm with another person, but if... if um. If, if I, you can't reach me, I'm probably with another woman. <laughs> so that's what it is. So I, I would appreciate that. And then also, I also have to give up care of women and what they do. So you also, if you also do what I do, I also don't care what the other woman's doing either. Like, I'm not going to be worried about, I bet you're talking to other ninjas. I don't care. You can talk to whoever you want to, <laughs> right? I really don't care. And uh, it's a healthy way to go about it. And people will say it's unhealthy, that I don't put hope in monogamy, but it's actually healthy because I don't think about it. What is unhealthy, are you constantly trying to, anybody ever been there? You guys have a girl or ladies, you can speak on this. You're a man. You're always thinking they're cheating. You always thinking they doing something. You be at work. You be at work and that's all you can think about. I've been there. You, that's all you can think about, and it ruins your day. You're constantly trying to figure out how you're going to catch the person. You're talking to the other person. You're talking to your friend. I think they doing something. I'm going to catch them. Then you see them acting funny with their phone. Phone flipped under. Your flow flipped over. Then you having a conversation. That is straight distracting. It's exhausting mentally. It is, it is toxic. It is unhealthy. This is unhealthy behavior if you, can't, if you have a mate and you can't trust them. I actually had a situation where um, I had a final exam going into a very important anatomy lab exam when I was in college. I was dating this young lady, and um, we were a couple, but we were kind of breaking up just a little bit, and I thought that she might have been, you know, being touched by somebody, 
right? I thought she might have been held by somebody. I thought somebody else was touching her inside. And I could not really balance the conversation out. So it distracted me so much that I bombed my final exam for my biology because I couldn't prepare going in like I wanted to mentally. I couldn't stay focused because I was always thinking about this other stuff. I went in with the B, ended up with the D. Now, if you know anything about biology, well, my major was kinesiology, but I needed that lab to be a C or better to count for my major. You can't count a class that's a D. So what did I do? I I went in and I um I had to take the lab all over again. I had to take the lab course. I, I got a B in the class, but the lab is separate. And I went in with a B and came out with a D. So I had to then spend another semester to take the lab again to relearn all the bones and relearn all the muscles. And do you see how that's payment? That ended up costing me money, ended up pushing me back a semester because those courses are prerequisites for other courses. And that is payment. Everything is payment. Just because you don't pay it direct doesn't mean it's not a payment to you. And these are the things that young men don't understand. So when you're trying to argue me, I was like, Nigga, I had to go to school an extra semester <laughs> over some broad. So, you know, it, it's one of those things. He says, these, these get degrees indeed. So I was like, man, you know, and, I, and when I think about it, I was like, I could have avoided all that shit by just staying focused. So just stay focused, man. You're going to pay anyway, up and down. Just find a healthy way. The, the, re, the real way is the healthy way. Uh, but when you see stuff, boom. All right, she come in with her phone. Oh, man, shout out to uh, our brother here, Aaron Burroughs, says, Coach, my sibling works for a dark money pack, and they are watching you to understand why the Dems are losing black men. Protect your neck. Uh-oh. Ninja. New, 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 new world order. <laughs> Jesus. New, 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 new world order. This ninja. Did you want, were you trying to scare me today? This ninja said. New, 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 new world order. All right. All right. So if they really want to know, they can come interview me uh, about why they're losing black men. All right. So interesting there. I know they're desperate too. These people are desperate. I better protect my neck for sure. But uh, the Dems are losing black men's uh, black men are black men are going left. I'm sorry. They're going right. If you will. Because the same old, same old ain't working. The same old, same old ain't working. And uh, we do have to clean up the image of the black man in America for sure. All right, the pookie shit, the thug, the hoolum, that that ain't it. The player, the Mac, the ninja that's so charming, the ninja that's good with women. Oh, I know. If I don't know anything, I know women. Ninja ain't got nothing else to his name. But he knows how to get hoes. And they marry. Uh, this, this, is the, this is a despicable representation of the black man's imagery. We need to get rid of it. The simp, the simp, the stepdaddy. We need to decease all these images. Decease them. Or if we don't decease them, we need to not prioritize this as the standard image of the black man. All right, 100%. We need to elevate, re-elevate the standard of the black man. All right, meaning that, and guys, I got a clip for you. I'm going to show you later. All right, yeah, the Casanova. We need to unalive all of these imageries because these are imageries that are pushed upon you and they depend on you. The, the Democrats depend on you leaning on these. Uh, the, one, the man that's so good with, with his Johnson, the Johnson good ninja, the good Johnson ninja. All right, these are all bad imageries. They're not, the, name another group of people that have that as an image and are successful, okay? Mm. Name another group of people that have that imagery and they can claim success. Not even the stepdaddy is a horrible representation to push forward upon a group of men. There are also a group of men that have, okay, the baby ain't yours, but you can still take care of them. I mean, <laughs> this is sad imagery. And it depends on you going back to the plantation. Men just don't want to be on the plantation. They don't want to be. There's men that don't want to be on the plantation anymore. But anyway, and then they will claim these are the real men. These are the real men, the pookies. These are the real men, the good Johnson slanging ninja that got nothing else to his name. The good man, the Tyrone, we would aspire to be him. 
the good man, the stepdaddy, the good man, the Mac, the good man, the um, the the ninja that take care of somebody else's kids. Yeah, these are all not good images. These are images that are not good. All right. Anyway, there's a woman in here. So though, what works? A man. Can we just be a man that be on a plan? And our plan ain't a woman and another man's kids. All right, we we actually lead our families. Because I'm going to show you how far it gets later on. Shout out to our brother here. We're going to call him Spike Spiegel. Shout out to the coach, Gang Yang, and Skeletor. Silence, you fool. Indeed. All right, uh, the, the old sacrificial utility lamb ass ninja. All right, the lay down his life ninja. Lay down your life. Well, you didn't have no life anyway, but lay down your life. Kayla says, bad news for the Cleveland Brown Yowls. Deshaun Watson done for the season after breaking the bone in the storing soldier. They are done for now. Let's give them the buzzer. All right, shout out to the Cleveland Browns and the massage therapist are going to be busy. Snidja going to be on the, on the mend. All right, at least his shoulder is going to get massaged. Let me check out the super chats on this side. Shout out to our brother Derek Choice. He says, I'm trying to go to Africa to see Ty- Tyla Sethel. She is 21 and beautiful. All right, Tyla Sethel, you got me interested. So I'm going to look her up. Let me see if I can, I can get her here. All right, Ninja got me. Sethel, Sethel. All right, Tyla. Oh, my. All right, uh, she's in Africa? All right, sign me up. All right, hold on for a second. Let me see if I can get a good picture for her where she don't look like a straggle. Boy, there's some younger photos of her, Ninja, where I cannot pull up. All right, but uh, let me see here. Uh, It looks like she's been around for quite a long time. I don't know what image to pull up because she does look quite young, and Ninjas get uncomfortable with shit like this. And they'll be like, you shouldn't be looking at her, me, your daughter. She looks like she got white folks uh, as parents. She a half-breed. All right, let's pull up this one. This one looks like she's legal. (laughs) All right, here we go right there. Uh, It's a little blurry. That would be her. Where's she from? Where's she from? Anybody know where she? Oh, she's South African? So she got half-breed. She gonna be a half-breed. Somebody in her fi- family white. Yeah, some of these pictures, Ninja's gonna be like, man, you cannot be aroused by that. Ninja, who you talking about? All right, Ninja. How old is she, 21? Okay. Is she a 304? I know nothing about her. She's a model. Or an actress? What is she? I don't know what she is. Yeah, she looks good right there. She looks good. Anyway, she's a good-looking gal. She looked Puerto Rican to me. <laughs> so I said half-breed is crazy. Is she, uh, is she a Puerto Rican? Her daddy was a colonizer. <laughs> yeah, she looked like she, looked like, uh, she a half-breed. She looked like she a mulatto. Yeah, there's one person. That's one white dude that got it. All right, uh, yeah, anyway. White dude is a colonizer, you fool. She a singer? Oh, man, she good-looking, man. Hey, if I'm going to Africa, I definitely want to see some of that. I want to see some of that foot action. Yeah. All right. Ninja got me. Hey, man, why you do this to me, man? Lord, have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We must. Is she a skeezer? Stay fo- All right. People calling her a 304 singer. Okay. Shout out to Run Forest Run says, thanks for the edutainment, coach. Appreciate you. Steven Russell, why all these women sound like Barry White? Uh, did you guys know that masculinity is uh, something that uh, masculine behavior is something that people can evolve, evolve into? Uh, women are now taking on masculine characteristics as a means to, because they have to protect, right? They go and say, I can do all by myself and I can protect myself and I can, you know, support myself. Do you know that they can transmute masculine qualities by taking on these roles and responsibilities? It's scientific. I won't provide the data, but also cigarettes and vapes. But this is all alleged. But do you know that women develop masculine characteristics the more masculine uh, responsibilities that they accept and vice versa? Men do, men, men do the opposite as well. So it, he says black men know that. Yeah. So women that become single mothers, they protect their thing. They live in bad environments. They tend to what? Be bigger. That is what nature does to you. You tend to become bigger to appear bigger as to not get violated. 
Not only that, their shoulders get broader. They tend to talk with a deep voice as to be walking down the street. What's up, ninja? You can't. They tend to be more aggressive. They tend to grow mustaches and shit. Their jaws tend to square off. The reason why is that they're living like a man would live. They living like a man. If you want, if you go to any neighborhood, oh Keisha, if you go to every any neighborhood where the women are feminine or the women are picked and desired for their femininity, the women are often what small, skinny, collarbones, frail, non muscular. Even liberal white women will do this. You'll see them. They be in the gym looking like hulks, <laughs> right? So anyway, their shoulders get broader. This is scientific. Look it up. This is adapting. Yes, a, 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 adapting is has evolutionary quality. So you're adapting to your environment. And you do that for three, four generations. The women start to look at Philadelphia. Go to Philadelphia. Go to downtown Philly. And just walk around. <laughs> just walk around and tell me what the women look like what do they sound like how do they act they be wearing big ass uh goose down uh jackets they they be wearing uh uh <laughs> wave caps and and bonnets and uh you know they be wearing the hats they be they be walking tough they be wearing timberland boots with the jeans tucked in so <laughs> You go to Philadelphia, you can see it because that's the environment. They tend to be more brawlic, more like, hey, your homeboy, what's up? They tend to adapt to listen to the music that makes them feel protected and adapt to the environment. Brooklyn and all of these, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, think about it. It's interesting. But people don't think about these things. And it is what it is. That's what it is. And then if you find any culture where femininity in men is praised, guess what happens? <laughs> they start doing things that are very feminine, right? They started developing feminine qualities. It is what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, watch out for that type of thing there. It's not just the women are like, you can't, you can't accept me for my deep voice. It's not that you're, you have a deep voice. You're using your deep voice because you're independent, single, you're by yourself, you have to walk in and out of your apartment, you're never kind of with a guy, so you have to assume masculinity. And then your body will adapt to that. Your body will adapt. Also, uh, men who are around children in cohabitation, domesticated, those men have less testosterone. So what's going to get pushed forward? Then you're going to start doing feminine things. It's okay. I know people don't understand this, but it is. Shout out to Carrot Juice Podcast. Shout out to Carrot Juice Podcast. Coach, I just finished your hypergamy stream, and it is a modern classic. My favorite form of CGA is fire and brimstone and blue chip mindset. Honorable mention is the drunk history with CGA. He says, keep up the great work. I got to definitely bring back drunk history. I do do drunk science, too. All right, so it is what it is. Shout out to you, man. Thank you, John Doe, says Joe Smith's ex-wife or a strange wife made himself and herself look bad on it is what it is she also told on herself when mace asked her questions about the relationship i wish i could share it but it's pretty new and i don't want to get a copyright war hammer says sorry i haven't been super chatting lately i've been fixing binds all right shout out to you man get your binds fixed bind, all right mr abdul says what's up my brother I'm a producer. We are auditioning for CGA coming to America. Shout out to you. African queens are lined up, my brother. All right, I can't wait. Do you got the girl that says the royal, what is it? The royal salami is clean, your highness? I want that woman, okay? I want that woman. I want, I want, when I come to Africa, ladies, you African ladies, you don't even know what's going to happen to you. Line them up. <laughs> Michael R. A. Coach, women eighteen to thirty-five, living life by aging in dog years and don't even know it. These holes ain't winning. I had a young lady, thirty-one, beautiful sister, and uh, took her out, had a good time. I didn't fix this or buying, but I gave her a good time. I told her, I was like, you know, you're old, <laughs> and she was like, 
And she's feminine. She looks way younger than her years. And I'm not lying. I'm not just saying that to you. She's 31. She looks 23. Okay. She's very feminine. She ain't aggressive. She's very nice sister. Like there's not many sisters that are like her. All right. But chocolate is skin, beautiful Southern from the South. She's originally from the South. But <laughs> I told her, I said, yeah, I was like, you on the old side. She was like, what? She's like, I'm, I'm 31. She was like, I'm old. I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was done. She was done. She was looking like this. Like she had that epiphany. Like she had that look like she was looking off to the side. And I was like, yeah, you old. Like it's, you don't have much time left. <laughs> she was like, bruh. Now I didn't say it in a mean way. I didn't say it in a mean way. I was just letting her know. I was like, you know, I didn't tell her about the wall or any of that, but she kind of acknowledged those as truths. But I was like, 31? That's old. You an old woman to me. <laughs> she, she, was, she was flabbergasted. All right, she was flabbergasted. But I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, there ain't much, there, there ain't much, there ain't much, time that you got left to correct this do you realize in nine years you'll be 40 <laughs> like ring the bell i'm like you would be there's not much left that you got but the thing is she looks young so she can ride that out for a couple more years but i had to hit her i had to hit her up <laughs> i had to hit her up. she was flabbergasted man but she was nice about it she didn't scream or kick she you know she realized what was up she knew what Guys, all women know this inherently. They're just trying to convince you. They're trying to fool you. They're trying to fool you that they still kind of have all this uh, value left. And, and Dr. Thunder was talking about this the other day. And typically, it's kind of black women that pull this card because they look young. So they still like, oh, but then they hit 40. And then they're like, okay, uh, it's time to get serious. And I'm like, no. For, don't try to get serious at 40. This is a bad strategy. <laughs> You're trying to get serious at 40. Yeah, because you look good and you look younger. At 40, they can look 31. At 31, they can look 24. And this is what this young woman does. She looks great. But still 31. Still value-wise, it's not a good, she's not a good long-term investment. <laughs> so it is what it is. <laughs> It's kind of game over by the time you get your wits in. So she was kind of thinking about it. I have her thinking. And a lot of things that I tell her because I'm a, I'm a true mentor to her, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I'm a true mentor to her. She takes everything that I say and she goes back. She goes back and she uses that shit and she will come back to me. And she was like, can you help me understand? So, I, you know, I keep her around because of that. She never takes it. She does take it personal. But she never comes back with anger. And I never give it to her in anger. I try to explain it to her. So she'll take it. And then she'll come back. And then she'll come back and she'll say, okay, help me understand, blah, blah, blah. So that's, what, that's why I can keep her around. She never turns the table over. You lying. All right. A sprinkle, sprinkle told me. <laughs> she never does any of that, which is good. But 31, ladies, is it's about to be time's up. It's about to be time's up. And that's you. It, especially if you're looking for a high value man. High value man, it's time's up. If you want a regular ninja, you're going to be okay. You want a ninja that live above the corner store, you're going to be fine. You want a step dummy ass ninja, you're going to be good. You want a ninja going nowhere, you want a no good ass ninja, you want a no doing ass ninja, you want any of those, you're good. And this is what they'll say. Well, I can always, you're going you're gonna to be good with no good ninjas. You're going to be good arguing about going to Cheesecake Factory. You're going to have those ninjas where you're going to be arguing, sleepless night, STIs. Uh, you know, you're going to have all that ninjas. But, but at the end of it, you're trying to chase the top tier ninja. The competition's too steep. So this ninja got way too many. He got way more options at his age than you have at 31. It's a reality. You're just going to be frustrated the rest of your life. And, th and then when you hit 45, it's a riggedy, it's a riggedy rap, right? Mm. <laughs> it's a riggedy rap. Don't count on nothing coming your way. If you do, 
have something coming your way, you got lucky. And this is just me telling the truth. I'm not trying to put people down. But 45 is really done. That ship is sailed, plane gone, pack it up. All right, get your luggage, book your flight. You're going to be single for the next 35 years and dealing with ninjas that don't got no teeth, ninjas that work at the gas station. <laughs> but in terms of that power couple, all that, riggedy rap. And, of course, we keep talking about these points, but a lot of people don't get it. Last one, Stephen Russell, co-sponsorship. Yeah, he says, tuition, all these facts, and no one appreciates you. Coach game, make it rain, game. For real, Ninja, where the support at? Where the support at? Support, you know, it's holidays, understandable. Ninja got to wait to tax season to get Ninjas to donate, but I get it. I, listen, all right, for real, though. Uh, let, let me get back to the show, because that was a long one over here. Uh, I'm going to get back to the show. Uh, here it is right here. Ain't love grand. Love is grand. All right, and divorce is 100 grand. We're going to talk about that in a bit right here. So let's go back to the love conversation. Love is grand. We have uh, this meme right here. This is a meme of a brother, and they say, this is a funny meme. It says right here, point of view, or POV as the young people call it, I'm going to tell my sons this is what happens when you put that woman first. And go ahead. I don't know who this guy is right here, but take a look at this comedic meme. This is what happens when you put that woman first. All right, shout out to you in your Jaheem voice. Yep, man, and you become a wreck. Uh, there's another slide right here. Uh, Jaheem, put that woman first. And, you know, I don't want to say any rumors about Jaheem. But, yeah, man, Ninja, you be going down bad. Didn't he get arrested? It don't work out in the end. You put that woman first. Yes, this Ninja put Lori Harvey first. And this Ninja out here crying, clutching his pillow like Stewie. Okay? Is that Dawson? Is that the guy? Oh, that was Lori Harvey's girl. That was the first guy. That was Lori Harvey's boy right here. Okay. Okay. That was Lori Harvey's boy, the first one. I think uh, this is guy. Oh, oh, Will, the fuck. Okay. The alleged fudge packer right here. Will Smith. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah. Uh, you put your woman first, man. Or any men. Yeah. You get, you get blacked up here. Oh, Tyrese. Oh, how did I know? Yeah. That's so what happened when you put that woman first. This is what they do. They kind of, you know, they they, they kind of, uh, what do they call it? Succubus. Succubi. They got you out here crying, looking, uh, what can I do? What do I do? What do you want from me? Have you out here questioning yourself when you put that woman first? Oh, look at Ben Affleck, not Ben. Mm. Yeah, man, Ben had to circle back to J-Lo. And he out here miserable. Look at Ben. He all scared. What is, what is this? This is just a shell of himself. What's going on with Ben Affleck, man? He be looking down bad. There's too many videos of him looking down bad. All right, what happens when you put that woman first? Uh, who is this ninja? Oh, that's Papoose. Oh, Papoose. Oh, uh, I remember I did a video on Papoose. Yeah, man, that's what happened when you put your woman first. Ninja, you took care of her kids when she was in the pen. And she was out there getting sliced and diced by Illy Philly's finest freestyle rap artist. I can't remember his name. All right, Pat Poos, put that woman first, man. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Listen. All right, man. Sometimes it happens to you when you get yourself out of order. How about this? They call this the silver bullet of parental alienation. This is an older clip, but this will let you know how what women are using to get custody of your kids and alienate you from your kids. All right, ain't love grand. For the people who are going to listen, look at this topic and say, coach, push in marriage. Well, listen. This is the risk that you take by getting married. Let's play it. Around this. Ain't no far around there without you. I'm sorry. This was Father's Day 2011. And according to Neil, it was the last time he saw his kids because of a restraining order that was quickly issued against him. Part of what journalist Michael Volpe refers to as the silver bullet technique. Silver bullet technique is when during custody or, or divorce, Usually it's the woman, though not always, uses a either bogus or just false allegations of abuse to get a restraining order, which is then used as leverage in that divorce or custody. Now, this, this is stuff that we've been fully aware of, but the normie world will not acknowledge this. Ain't love grand. So Kiki Palmer is the latest person to use this abuse claim 
to get custody of the child. We all know what this is, and the abuse claim is false. And the reason why it's false is they're going to explain it later, but it's completely uh, based on a fallacy. All right, a fallacy that is easy to believe, and they're going to get the custody advantage because the judges have no other choice. All right, but let's continue and let them explain it. Volpe writes about it in his book, Bullied to Death, about a case similar to Shelton's. And he says it's increasingly becoming the legal weapon of choice. It's a, it's a Look, it's not called a silver bullet technique because it happens a few times a year. It's called a silver bullet technique because it's, it's prevalent enough that, that they have a term for it. What shocks Volpe is that the restraining order kept getting reissued for years. He's never been arrested for domestic violence. There's no evidence for domestic violence. There was even- All right, and so that's the big key when you hear these restraining order and custody battles. When women use this, it's egregious. That's why they call it the silver, silver bullet. They're lying. And it's always gonna be an abuse claim. And the abuse claim is often not met with evidence. Evidence is always absent in these TROs. Evidence is always absent in these restraining orders. Evidence is always absent in the custody battle. Evidence is always absent. The abuse evidence does not exist. No police report, no arrest record, no uh, no evidence at all. No evidence that the, the father was interviewed fairly. All they do is go to some uh, therapist. They go to somebody. They go to the, DR, the TRO. They go to these attorneys, and they just say abuse, restraining order, custody, and then child support. All right, it's these it's the oldest trick in the game. And but they're saying almost everybody's using this. All right. It's now this is an old video, but this is the order of things. Now, this does affect people who are actually abused. All right, but now these tropes are used as a weapon. Is they use this as the first weapon to get custody advantage. Here we go. Even testimony to that in court. And the state did an assessment of Neil. They determined that he was not a threat to his children either. And I think about a month ago, a somebody said, what's the TRO? It's a temporary restraining order. So temporary restraining order requires no evidence. All the person that says, hey, um, this guy is abusive towards me. He yelled. I might have evidence later on to show you. I'm scared of him. Blah, blah, blah. That's a temporary restraining order. And then they'll file the custody after the temporary restraining order. And we do have a district attorney that was counseling divorce attorneys on how to use temporary restraining orders to get fathers removed from the house to get custody or advantage. All right. So this is a big legal game. And uh, this game is played worldwide. I'm sorry, nationwide. All right. Let's continue here. Judge who's out of the county finally said none of these restraining orders should have ever been granted. Neil was more than alienated. His wife swore out a series of complaints on him. And one day I got arrested three times. But he was never convicted, even when he was put in jail over this letter that threatened to kill his wife's attorney, which Neil swears he never wrote. When Neil got out of jail, his next fight was to stay out of a mental institution. First, his wife asked that he be involuntarily committed. He was released. And later that same day, documents show that his sister did the same thing, claiming that he was bipolar and off his meds. I have all the evidence and proof needed to back up all my allegations. What are you doing today? Lawsuits, motions. After five years of feeling harassed, Neil decided to file his own suits over what happened to him. Wife, which you're very familiar with the case. Right, not the judge. So I need to file this lawsuit today. And, take, and look, look at this, man. I'm going to tell you, this is the belly of the beast. This is a miserable place to be. If you're at the count, the court clerk, if you're filing, if you're at a social service, you're at the, this is a miserable place to be. By the way, the wheels of justice spin very slowly, I believe. It, these things take years to process, years to clear your name. The damage is already done. You've already paid the child support. You've already been to jail. You've already had your weapons taken from you um, or your, your firearms. You've already had your kids alienated. By the time you clear your name, Ninja, it's been five years down the line, two, three years down the line. This, this moves very slowly, but a temporary restraining order is fast. They just go down there and say, bang, file it, and then to protect the so alleged victim, they have you turn in your firearms. It stays on your record. You cannot buy a new firearm, okay? You can't buy any new firearm because you're a threat to an individual. Um, sometimes in some cases you can't get employment because it's on your record and it stays on your record. If you've had a temporary restraining order filed, most of the time it's still on your record. So you can still pull it up. Now it doesn't tell you the results 
of the restraining order. It just says one was filed against you. So 20 years down the line, I think this happened to a celebrity. 20 years down the line, people can look up, oh, he had a restraining order in 2007. But it doesn't say. It just says there's a restraining order. It doesn't say what happened. It doesn't detail. Oh, he was arrested for this. He had a restraining order. This is why you got to get these things expunged, which is another expense if you can afford it. A lot of men cannot afford it. Guys, watch out for these things. Because when we talk about marriage and relationships, cohabitation, this is a big-time risk. You talk about having kids. You know how many people I know that you don't even know have these situations? And this is the vicious playbook. They do this. They run this just as much as they keep notes on all the men that they're with. All women run this play. This is a, well, all women are able to run this play. It's sad. And they will destroy your life. And you cannot, you cannot, you cannot do anything about it. And don't think attorneys are going to help you. You're going to fight this case by yourself. And, of course, if you hire an attorney, this is going to cost you twenty dollars to $35,000. All right, let's continue. He says he's not looking for money just to expose what he says too many people are going through. Family court system is broken. And that's an issue on which he is not willing to settle. Settle what? I mean, they've taken everything from me. How can I not fight it? My only choice would have been to give up and run away. Can you give up on your children? That's, that's the only thing I care about. And then, of course, they'll say, the father doesn't help, he a deadbeat, he left, and you've dealt with all of that. That's the stuff they don't tell you they did to you. Oh, he's abusive, he left, he don't take care of his kids, he don't talk to them, he don't reach out. <laughs> you're sitting there like, that's what you're putting, that's what they've done against you. And then you're like, what am I supposed to do with this shit? You've been in jail. So it's very, very, very important that you understand that this is the risk of your goofy ass falling in love. If you don't have leverage out here, and this could happen if you have leverage, but think of the case. Kiki Palmer, the male, didn't have leverage. That guy that was featured here, he obviously is a poor American. He, he doesn't seem like he's wealthy, and he seems slow and... uh what I would call uneducated, if you will. So he doesn't seem like he has a, a, the ability to move around quickly, swiftly to be able to navigate himself out intellectually out of a situation. And so he depends on love. He depends on marriage. He depends on being a good guy. He depends on doing the right thing. And then has no leverage when she pulls and execute order 66. He can't do anything. He just got to go sit in jail. He got to go. When they say you got to go to uh 52 weeks of um, abuse counseling. Oh shit. <laughs> right you can say screw all that so it's wild out here and it's been guys it's been this way for 30 plus years this isn't new you know what's new and this is important what's new is we have men talking about it these things have been done against your fathers and your grandfathers your uncles and your brother them and they couldn't say shit. There was who were they going to talk to about? Because then when they come out and talk about it, ah, oh, shut up, hush up. Just pay your child support and move on. All right, stop being weak. You wasn't hitting it right. Ah, uh, Ninja, you was just out here. You was abuser too. Yeah, I knew you. Ninja, stop complaining. Ninja, what are you, gay? <laughs> All right, I guess I won't talk about it. You must don't like women. You hate women. Before YouTube, that's what ninjas had to face. See, if you was hitting it right, since she wouldn't be... <laughs> right and you just sit there like oh boy so when they call this an echo chamber okay it's an echo chamber but you know what's odd is that we now can say and reveal the things that have been happening to us for decades that nobody seems to want to address or fix when i show you matt walsh matt walsh is going to appear on my show he's like well we can't fix it now so just get married in the meantime <laughs> you're like is that the solution this is sad nobody cares about men the reason why people know about this now is because we've been talking about it for the last 10 years me for the last five people who preceded me five years before that people that became popular in 2020 and 2021 
This is why people, men, this is why I could tell you now. And I've been censored and shadow banned and called names and done videos on. I've been the victim of this. These things happen to me just like they happen to you. And at the end of the day, nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> they don't care. This is what tells you. When we tell you why you should get married, please understand if it doesn't work out, nobody cares about you. Nobody. Not even your mother will care. Not even your mother will do anything about it. I'm just letting you know. It's that serious. So let's continue on. Ain't love grand. Here we go. Woman claims cannabis-induced psychosis made her stab her boyfriend 108 times, then delete her dog. Well. Y'all ready for this? Jesus. Her name is Bryn. I can't pronounce her last name, age 32. Right about the age, they be going goofy. Had her charges downgraded from deletion to involuntary manslaughter after a pseudo-psychiatrist backed her defense. Mm. Well, and there's a Kaylee. So what do I tell you about these Kayleys? Here's the record on Kayleys. They look very unassuming. They look like they cannot harm a fly. They look like they're nice. Just, but they be having demons in them, right? Do not trust these smiley ass pictures. Oh, she's just a nice, she's the Taylor Swift. You know, they're going to give you the Taylor Swift. She's nice and she's so harm, harmless and she couldn't do. She stabbed a man 108 times. You got to watch out for Kaylee's, All right, They be doing some wild, wild, wild ish. And they also be doing, where's the pig? They also have a tendency Something happens around age 30 with them. They be flipping, they they be flipping they lid. And they don't know who they are. They kind of lose track of who they are. And uh, most of the time you get mental illness. And it also comes from substance abuse, lack of self-esteem, no direction, um, and uh alcohol abuse, all right, partying, uh it, you know, the party, party lifestyle. And they are perceived to be innocent, but don't ever believe that. Don't ever believe that they look harmless because they're not loud and obnoxious like other races of women, but they are very, very volatile. Very. Mm. And it says right here, uh, there she, <laughs> well, that's what she really looks like right there. You see the difference? You see, do you see the difference guys? I mean, take a look at, wow. All right. Again, sometimes I don't look at the entire article. I just share with you. Take a look at the difference. You don't know what they like when they go behind closed doors. Yeah, look at that. Like, you wouldn't have never thought. <laughs> Jesus. And why she got cuts on her neck. I guess that's what happens when you stab somebody 108 times. And look at this goofy-ass beta brat. And that's you. There you go. There you go. So now she look wild out. This is what she looks like in the morning. This is what she looks like all prim and proper. I'm a nurse. I'm educated. I went to TCU. But then, looking at her, crystal meth. And that's you. Man, look at them eyes, man. And, of course, she's a, a dope fiend. Because she had what? Cannabis-induced psychosis? What is that? cannabis and What's that mean? <laughs> cannabis-induced psychosis. Uh, let's see here. Oh, wait. It says, uh, surgeons managed to save her life. Okay. What happened? Oh, she got shot up by a retractable steel or baton. Okay, she got shot up. Oh, she got hit with the stun, stun gun. All right, in right here. She contends that she was in the midst of a marijuana-induced psychosis that night. She deleted uh, this man and her pooch. Recreational pot was used, uh, which was, uh, I'm sorry, recreational pot use was legalized in California after vote. Okay, who cares about that? T ten, 20 years of recreational pot usage. She confessed to police and was charged for deletion, but later in that month, it says the judge approved the motion for prosecutors seeking to have the charges reduced to involuntary manslaughter. Her maximum prison sentence was reduced from 25 years to just four. Mm. The decision followed the district attorney's receipt of the psychologist's evaluation. It says experts have suggested in court filings that she, her decision to harm her dog had to have resulted from a psychotic episode as she is an animal lover. All right, well, that don't surprise me either. And that's you. 
they met. Let's see how they met. Let's see how they met. All right. And the reason why I'm stumbling is because I'm trying not to pronounce these names. The two lovers met at a dog park and were only dating a few weeks at the time of the deletion. She was 27. He was 26. Mm. Guys. (sighs) Only fools rush in. They was only dating a few weeks. They met at a dog park, so they didn't meet on a dating app. This ninja ran game on. He met the Kaylee at the dog park. She a weed dope fiend. Weed dope fiend. Kaylee's tend to be on the weed, man. They can't handle. They can't handle. Listen, I'm not trying to be. White women can't handle the following things. I'm just let you know. There's three things they cannot handle, and it is beyond me, but something in their system makes them go haywire. Those three things are, the first one's understandable, coca. They flip their gourd when they're on coca and or meth. Number two, marijuana. They turn into a whole different person. Number three, alcohol. They, they, they literally be like, I blacked out, I don't remember nothing. And everybody believes them. Number four, chocolate. I don't know, what, and I'm not talking about ninjas. I'm talking about real rich chocolate. If you give a white woman chocolate, she literally adapts and turns into another person. Oh, I'm another person. Chocolate is like sex. Mm. <laughs> it's sitting there like, what the hell? Like, I eat chocolate and nothing happens. And they were like, chocolate has, um, they have effects in it that it's just like, it's chocolate. It's a chocolate bar, Ninja. It's a Snickers. I never had a chocolate... <laughs> I never had a Snickers bar really change how I felt. They cannot handle chocolate. Mm. Take, take, take chocolate to a white woman. They be going crazy over some chocolate. Like that changed the whole world. Giving white folks chocolate. They didn't lost their mind. They never, they still ain't been able to handle it. They didn't win. They rounded everybody up and it wasn't on coca leaves. It was chocolate. Look it up. <laughs> mm. Like what the hell? They be going crazy over some chocolate, man. Then you got alcohol and coca. Like, what's wrong with these people, man? They out here crazy. Wait a minute. Who are I don't know what happened to me. I ate chocolate. (laughs) All right. Anyway, met at a dog park. Only dated a few weeks before his ass got deleted. This is why. All right. It says right here, she allegedly told police after smoking the pot, she had an out-of-body experience and thought she was dead. Voices then started telling her to save herself. She needed to kill the man in this question over some weed. I mean, a lot of this weed got fentanyl in it. That's that. And a lot of the weed is synthetic. So this weed argument of legalizing weed, I don't think it was meant for synthetic weed. Right? I think they were talking about the seeds and the little, you know what I mean, in the bushel whatever y'all do to break up y'all weed. I think that's what people wanted to legalize, but now they didn't put the synthetics and the fentanyl in it. And y'all didn't just go in cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And you're like, it ain't harming me. But she out here allegedly deleting this ninja. Listen, she didn't even know him long enough. You heard voices over some marijuana? I doubt that. But ain't love grand, all right? Ninja, he was doing, he was, he was minding his own business. He was minding his own business four weeks ago. And then he's getting knifed up 1511 times because he met abroad at a dog park. Mm. We got to do better, gentlemen. We got to do better. Shout out to our brother Kevin G. He says, Coach Karuba Sana Narobi. I don't know what that means. He says, I'd advise you to holler at the coach gang to really enjoy the city in Nairobi. He says, yeah, you can do all the tourist things, but you really want to hit up the local joints. For $3.85, we'll introduce you to an authentic quang. Just get your malaria shots if you want to head out west ninja free agent lifestyle for life. I got to get my malaria. All right, do I got to get the the pokey poke? I got to get malaria shots now. Uh Uh-oh. All right, well, that's normal. That's normal. We're almost at the main event. Shout out to the regular dude. Slowly but surely, the whole world uh, is becoming the BW. Yep. The whole world becomes the BW at the end of the day. That That's spoiler alert. 
Spoiler alert. And by the way, the way the BW acts right now, I want to let you know, they are under the influence. The stereotypical BW that is held up and elevated in our society is not the authentic BW. Although there are some qualities that are extended from a civilization before. But yes, that woman of that BW woman has to go as well. Just like these rusty ninjas, the imagery of the black man needs to be reorganized. Uh, and, and you know what other black man needs to go? <laughs> Complaining ass ninjas, historical ass black men. Historical ass, my ancestors uh, in, in 1920, there was a law passed as ninja. Them ninjas got to go too. But they're also, because them ninjas be bringing up history shit that don't matter right now. Ninja, we in twi- we 115 years later. <laughs> All right, but the black, the image of the black woman has to go, man. They've actually just really, I don't know why. Well, speaking of history, why do black women not know that what they're given in terms of this Sukihana, like they're literally, it literally explains history. Because here's the deal. Historically, in a proper lens, we can see that people were manipulated. So when we go back to Amos and Andy and Step It, Fetch It, and we go back to, you know, 1970s, and you go back to what you would call black exploitation movies which sounds worse than it actually was but in historical when you see goofy stuff in a historical lens you can look back and say damn we were clowns but these people volunteered to be clowns right so people will say nah the people of the steens and the bergs made us do this for money the al jolson's and all of these people and the um and the uh people the def jam the rappers, the Humpty dances. They made us do this and they benefited. Why didn't these people, yeah, the shufflers, why didn't these people stand up for themselves? And then you look at today, <laughs> right? They're doing the exact same thing, but people say, well, but they get in the bag. So then you see the yin yang twins and the Migos and all of this shit. And you know, these gentlemen are just, the, they're just doing it for the money. And everybody's going to say, they get in the bag, though. Then when you see Sukihana, the imagery of the black woman, icy spicy, sexy red, and then you see what they're doing, you see what it's the causing, and then people are going to say, they're getting the bag, though. Norman Lear, thank you, Norman Lear. But go back. Go back to Amos and Andy. They was getting the bag back then, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but so and then people say, well, how come they did it? They literally were getting the bag for that day. Like, that's what they were doing. It's the exact same thing. So they were like, hey, I got to make a living out here. <laughs> so why would they not do it? They got the opportunity. Norman Lear and them put them up to it. They did it. They got the acting. They shuffled. They got the bag. Same as what's happening today, which I can't understand why people don't put two and two together. They were getting the bag back then, too. They were getting an opportunity, too. They were getting rich and famous, too. They were getting put in Hollywood, too. They were getting music deals, too. So why not do the Humpty Dance? <laughs> right? I'm going to do the Humpty Dance, too. So it's kind of the same thing here, but people aren't putting two and two together. And I'm like, man, y'all letting it slide. And then 20 years down the line, y'all going to be all smart about it. And they did this reputation. And these people, yeah. The menstrual shows didn't die. It's alive and well. The chitlin circuit is alive and well. It nothing's changed, but the date on the calendar. <laughs> right? But it's all if you're willing to embarrass yourself, they'll do it. If you're meaning if you're if you're meaning to tough talk and and, and tell people the right thing, they'll just censor you. <laughs> yep, JJ Evans. Mm. Shout out to Robert S F. DC, he says, yes. He is the Kevin Samuels of Africa, Kenya. Check IGDM on future African tours with him. He sent the DM. Okay. Oh, okay. He sent me a DM? All right. He sent me a DM. Oh, okay. All right, I got to dig that out. Maybe he can send another one so I can push it to the top. 
He says Kenya, South Africa, Rwanda, Tanzania, Zambia, and Uganda. Please give me some African queens, <laughs> right? Please. I think it'll change my life. It'll change my life. Shout out to the African women out here, man. It'll change my life. I'll be out there with them black of the berry, the sweet of the juice, the authentic black queens. Queens. All right. Shout out to Lamont James. What's up, coach? He says, leave the brolic Wimbledon from my city, Philly alone. Our winners are cold like our hearts. My Eagles going to beat them Chiefs on Monday night football. Go birds. If they don't win, well, I think they're primed up to win. I think they're going to win too. I got to do my football show. You're absolutely right. We got our brother here. Let me see here. This is, shout out to no government name. Says, much love, coach. Keep preaching. That's a sponsorship. Yeah, man. Shout out to you. Thank you, man, for that sponsorship, brother. And I can't say your name, but appreciate you. D Rock Den says, straggle and sniggle, Miss Piggy. Send it. Man, man. And she said, do I look pretty? And eventually, that's the first thing she greeted with was manipulation. Manipulation is real, guys. Manipulation is real. So she was out there acting a fool in mud. And then the first thing she sees is her looking up. Do I look pretty? I bet you he has a, I bet you he has a sexual fetish too. No government name says women take on male traits because they suck the masculinity out of men. He says those Feminists take on male traits because they volunteered for it. Indeed. Indeed. And something to say about micro shimmerism is that they take on the male DNA as well by having a lot of men. I know women are like, yeah, but you guys have a lot of women, but I'm not injecting anything. She's not injecting anything into me. I do think that women transmute demons in the men sexually. This is not backed by science. This is just a belief. And the belief is succubi. I believe that a lot of the most promiscuous women are witches. Mm. Not not an evil witch. Not, a, <laughs> not, not that type of witch. But I think there's women who can easily give you sex. And also, sometimes I'll take it. <laughs> I have taken it. As a man that has advanced, I do believe that we transmute our power, our seed. There's power in our seed. Even if the seed is not used, there's power. I believe a lot of those characteristics are then put into the woman. That's scientific. That's, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing to argue about that. It's, it's a powerful thing. We're playing with powerful things and we're just frivolously playing. But I also believe that women transmute energy into men. Sometimes bad spirit, sometimes demonic, sometimes could be for good, mostly for bad. But yeah, I believe in soul ties. I believe in, in succubi, succubis. I believe in negative energy being transmuted into men unknowingly. And um, it happens, but I cannot prove it. I cannot prove that. Because you cannot prove it. The spiritual realm it cannot be proved, right? You have to have a, just a belief system. So, in other words, just protect yourself when you're out here. Protect yourself. Be vigilant. Protect yourself. Never think anything is free. All right, I'm trying to train you on this one, but we got corner store living ass ninjas that still want to argue me, and they want to argue that not everything's about money. In, in fact, money is a new concept. Money is a new concept. So then you start trying to understand things in a financial realm. Money has power, but we give money power. So if you're just not wanting to transact money and you think that's the end all be all, you're, you're out of your mind. For the most of our world, we bartered. Most of our worlds, we had small communities. We didn't have this currency in the banking system. This is somewhat new, right? In the form of the currency that we exist in, this is just a, the Fed, this is just a banking system controlling the currency which has power as well, but not everything's about money. Now, when the absence of your money, broke ninjas think it's free. There's nothing free out here. There's really, really, really nothing free. There's a, there's a price you pay for everything. And sometimes money is the easiest price. Sometimes that eliminates the bullshit. That's why money is powerful, because you can take it and then get rid of problems, seemingly. You're like, boom, okay, I don't want this problem. 
I'll pay for it to not have that. Okay, freedom. How much does freedom cost? Ninja, sometimes your life. That's a powerful price. Freedom is not free. Freedom's, freedom requires loss of life and bloodletting, bloodshedding, tears. That's what freedom costs. Freedom, Ninja, you, sometimes free people had to fight 400 years to get it. How is that free? So there's, a, there's always a price to pay. And even free sex offered to you can come at an extreme cost. Sometimes you escape. Sometimes you don't. But there's soul ties about it. And you pay. You pay, pay, pay. This doesn't cost you money, but look at your life. I often look at a lot of men. Look at these. If you look at guys that are like pimps and players, look at them. Their life, they often look like the walking dead. And I'm going to just show you. They, the guys that be talking about, yeah, man, I'll be out here. Them ninjas got dark weed smoking ass lips, dark circles under their eyes. They be looking gaunt and, and withdrawn in the jaws. They never look like they really ha- healthy. They be looking like finger temps burnt from smoking joints all day. They often look like death. They often look so bad that when you see them coming down the street, you'll cross the goddamn street. You'll be like, uh-uh. Skin, skin be effed up. Skin be effed up. They be having uh, acne at 40. You be looking at their skin. And they be like, I'll be out here. And they be like, looking all, yep, they ain't slept. They sleep pattern is all fucked up. They be sleeping all into the afternoon. And I look at it and I be like, you're paying. They eyes be jaundice and yellow. <laughs> you be like, Ninja, are you really getting it? And they be walking around with sunglasses all the time. They look, they look like, yeah, the stress. They look like it's taking a toll on them. They just don't know. They just don't understand it. Yep, they, 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 their life is out of order. They have warrants. They often got overpaid parking tickets because they ain't got time to take care of their shit because they're getting free pussy. And then all of a sudden, they'll get arrested for some bullshit, and they'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Crumbs all over their floor. Laundry stacked in the corner. <laughs> you just be like, you don't realize you're not paying. Like, look at your life, Ninja. Look at your life. That's a payment. The energy, the attention, the time, the out of order, the chaos. Women bring chaos to your life. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I don't care if she's the best woman in your life. She brings chaos. She cannot help it. This is something she cannot help. Just like we're supposed to bring peace and control. We're supposed to bring security. She brings chaos. Yep, they be alcoholics too, which doesn't help. They be looking bloated. All right. They be making videos slurring their word, words, dry ass skin. They never look really healthy. They never look like the picture and portrait of healthy. And I'm like, you don't realize that's getting to you. It's getting you. It's eating you up. I'm not saying to not do it. I'm just saying you have to really control this about your life. And I noticed, I'm like, damn, I'm tired. And the woman kept me up 11, 30, 12. The next day, I feel tired. I feel like, oh, do I really want to do this? And I go, that's a payment. That is literally you taking from what you need to do to be productive and responsible the next day. Then you got to do all of this. Yep. <laughs> then they said they got gingivitis, right? Teeth be falling out. Eventually, they don't got no insurance. There's always a payment. There's always a form. So never think about it. When you're transmuting these sexual experiences with women, you do have to be responsible. And I'm not perfect at this at all. I'm not perfect, but I'm conscious of it. I'm certainly conscious of it. So money doesn't excuse it. Just because you use money, actually, you're bringing it closer to you as well. So I just want you to be conscious of it. And then you'll start to make better decisions. If you just deny it and say, not my girls, not the girls I mess with. Women are chaotic. They drain your energy and soul. They do not return it back. There's no argument here. (laughs) That's how they exist. 
Without this, they, can, they do not give you energy. They do not give you attention. They bring confusion and chaos. They bring uncertainty. They bring insecurity. And you're the cure. You're supposed to calm all these nerves. They're, they're, they're frantic. They're unsure. They're kind of always 100%. And then they got to test you and shit test you and see if... <laughs> <laughs> And then all for some punani. All right, you're going to part your legs after I saw. But yeah, guys, you can deny it all you want, Ninja. They are time. Look, and Ninja's leaving the stream. They can't handle it. They leaving. I've had 150 people leave just on this. But I'm giving reality. People don't want to like, they don't want to hear it. Go make your excuses. I don't make excuses for myself. But I'm telling you facts. Women are not free. They're not designed to be free. Nothing you do with them is a, a free cost. It's always a cost to deal with them. Even your mother, even your wife, daughter, somebody just said that. Even female family. I was just going to hit that. Shout out to Juan or Suarez. Even female family. Thank you, Ronald. Even dealing with your mother comes at a cost. You're like, oh, ma. And your mama just be laying into you. How come you ain't do? How come you didn't get into and I, you need to help me and I need this? Even your mother will be giving you some problems and shit. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm talking about them. Your mom will get you. Your daughter, your daughters are going to get you. If you have multiple daughters, I know a dude that got four daughters, no sons. That ninja looks like he's dead. He's just a robot. He just go to work. And if you think, again, women are not free, have four daughters in real lives, you're going to realize real fast that women are not free. <laughs> okay? You got a wife and four daughters? Shit. Do you know how much it costs to raise girls? Then multiply that by four. Every time I see him, he looked like Kevin McHale. He's a white dude. He looked like a damn zombie of Frankenstein. He has no I'm like, this ninja needs some punani at the junior college. This ninja dead. He's never pleasant. He never smiles. He's always kind of, you can see he's distracted. He's kind of thinking about some things. Four daughters will kill you. Give you a coronary. Give you high blood pressure. <laughs> they ain't free. And a wife. <laughs> Shit. This ninja is crazy, man. He the walking dead. So women are not free. Once you realize that, your life will fit. You will become healthy real quick. Not saying you got to pay for it. I'm just saying every interaction you have with them is chaotic. Has a woman ever calmed you down? <laughs> the only time they do is if you busted a nut and she takes your head and she, you can calm down now, monster. And the only reason you need to calm down is you turned into the Incredible Hulk. Roar! And you roared in her guts. Now... <sighs> Can't calm you down. All right. <laughs> Let me see here. And shout out to Kevin McHale for catching the stray. Larry Bird's not walking through that door, fans. Kevin McHale's not walking through that door. And Robert Parrish is not walking through that door. And if you expect them to walk through the door, they're going to be gray and old. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Ladies in here disgusted. Hey, look, let's get to the main event. How about we do this? I got um, to get in here. I got to get in here and do this before we go too far. Hey, man, hit the like button here, and I want to really, really thank you for the support. I know it's holiday season and all of that stuff, but all the support will help. It helps the Baby Mama Terrorist Fund because a child is a terrible thing to alienate from a father. Get married today, gentlemen. Uh, we do have some classic clips to show you of people pushing you to get married today. Uh, do the benefits of marriage far outweigh the negative things that we tend to focus on? We focus on the negative. You're negative. All right, you're negative. All right, let's talk about the benefits of being married here. We're going to go to this video right here. Uh, and we have a brother. Shout out to this brother right here. Do rag and everything. Let's listen to what he has to say. So I wash, dry, and fold all of my wife's clothes. And this is a role that I took on 
once we got into a tough part of our relationship. And I honestly got kind of frustrated with it over time. And there were times where I wanted to switch the roles back, but I recognized something as I kept doing it. And what I learned is to not confuse masculinity with femininity by roles in the household. It should be structured on what really works for everybody. And it's also important to read the house and understand what's going on. Who's tired? Who's overwhelmed? Who can do more? Who has to step up? Who has to take a break? And by simply just folding these clothes, it became a lot easier on my wife for me to do this thing. And the, and the clothes didn't get piled up and I can just stay on top of this because I built the skills to do so. I do this and she takes care of all the kids' clothes. Now don't get me wrong, roles are important, but roles should be predicated on what's going on in a home and how time needs to be spent. So we're just finding what works for us and stripping off the masculinity and femininity of roles. Oh my goodness. Because it really doesn't matter. And me and my wife are a lot happier that way. Because it's mutual. Oh my goodness. Oh the humanity. <laughs> And shout out to Steph is cold. He my brother in the in the struggle here. Uh, but somebody says Steph is warm. Ninja, man, Steph is warm. They called him Steph is warm. Shout out to Steph is cold. <laughs> hey, man. And somebody also says something funny. That is not Steph is cold. Shout out to our brother here. Somebody called him Steph is warm. Okay. Somebody also gave him another name, and I thought it was funny. I missed it laughing at the other one here. Oh, Soft Ninja Era. All right. Soft Ninja Era. Oh, man. Uh, this is a rough one to watch, man. This is sad. And so, as you can see, this is typically what they force onto the black male image. This is the black, this is the black male image of uh, living in a sexless, future sexless marriage. All right, living in a future marriage, this is going to head to divorce. Ninja, you're going to get your kids taken from you because I know they. you have babies. She's going to bounce on you. You're going to lose this battle. Uh, you think this is going to bring a harmonious home? This is going to bring a sexist marriage home. But people want to say, no, you're a caveman, masculine, feminine, and all of this stuff. I do my own laundry now. Okay, so I do my laundry. Like, I do my laundry. I was folding clothes last night at 9 o'clock. All right, I had to fold them up real quick, looked at the clock. I said, let me get this done in 25 minutes. Folded all my clothes, put them away. I do my laundry. It's not a big deal, okay? But what happens is people bring these equal partnerships in, and they say it's going to bring har harmony, but this is going to make the last the relationship last longer, and she's going to then find a reason why to get up out of there, all right? You think you're doing a good thing and try to get rid of these gender roles, but you're going to find that it's going to not make the marriage as happy as you think. Soon as them babies get old enough for her to return back at the nightclubs, she gonna be back at the nightclubs. Soon as she get enough babies out of you, it's gonna be what it is. All right, people will stop. They, they they're not gonna talk about that. But here's here's the image here, and uh, as you can see, he also went um, interracial as well. Where's the uh, woman here? He went interracial. So my question is, all right, she doesn't look like a black American woman. My question is, if you had a black woman, would you be doing this? Nope. Uh, this tends to happen when men go interracial. Trust me, I know. Um, they tend to then fall into these lines of, you know, oh, I'll do it. I, like, if a black woman asked you this, in my opinion, he wouldn't have done it. Nope. He wouldn't have done it. Mm. This, is just a, this is just me jumping out there. Just me jumping out there. I might not, I might not be right about it. But I can guarantee you, if he was in a relationship, a marriage with a black woman and all had kids and shit like this, I guarantee you, you wouldn't have done this because you would have known what was it. So you would have you would have known it would have been the end of your relationship. Right. You would have known. But um, somebody said, yes, he would. All right. I think he wouldn't. But uh, anyway, uh, this is the modern marriage. So if you want to get married, this is the modern marriage that women believe they want. They think they want this. Woman, I'm here to tell you, you don't want this. You're going to resent this man in no time flat. Only reason this is working now is because they got, they got young children. And the reason I know that is because I was looking at her folding the clothes. Where's her clothes at? Uh, the clothes she was folding, he said he does. she does the children's clothes. There it is right there. Oh, no, that ain't it. There it is. Look at them little ass clothes. All right, that tells me they got babies. 
They got babies. So now they've had to balance this out. My question is this. This is me. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing. Some of these roles that you, you see out here that people claim are gender roles, I don't think they're gender roles. What I think they are are attention roles. What do I want to pay attention to? What is the cost of my attention? Because all people pay attention. If I'm focusing on little tasks, but I'm responsible for big tasks, is this a good use of my time? This is how I look at it. Now, if we financially do not meet our goals or expectations, if I cannot financially support myself, I never hear the gender roles. I never hear people say, well, she lost her job, therefore the family got destroyed. No, they're going to tell you to go get two jobs as a man. You cannot let your family lose out financially. If a woman's a breadwinner and the man's a stay-at-home mom, if the family implodes financially, it's still going to be his fault. Well, you was a no-good ninja that was sitting at home being Mr. Mom, a.k.a. Kiki Palmer and Darius Jackson. So now he's just a deadbeat, lazy-ass guy. He a scrub. Because that burden falls on the man. In this case, if that is my burden, why am I focusing on little shit like this? <laughs> yep, now I got to sell my motorcycle. She don't got to sell her makeup products and her hair curlers and her curling irons. Now I got to sell my sports car. I look at it as I need to focus on the larger things, the things that matter, because that's where my responsibility is. The gender roles never are where the male's responsible. It's always where the female's responsible. Then there's no gender roles. Then it's just a gray area. But I'm responsible for this whole operation. Therefore, it doesn't make sense for me if I'm the responsible one to focus on menial tasks like this. This is opportunity cost wasted. I know it might seem to bring a harmonious home. I know it might seem like this woman's going to feel like she can have sex with me as a reward for folding laundry, but as a collective, this is not good use of my time. Therefore, I must focus on things that are better use of my time. This is all I look at it as. It's not gender roles per se. I'm of the opinion that washing clothes and folding them is just an effort project. has nothing to do with women or men. It's about effort. So many people can wash clothes, but can they fold them? Nope. That's where, the, that's where the ball is often dropped. That's where the pileup is. So the effort is not being put in there. And so now you got a bunch of wrinkled up laundry piled up, but it's clean. So it has nothing to do with femininity or masculinity. The next part of that is cooking. Cooking is not a feminine thing to do. In fact, some of the most um, well-known chefs in the world are men. Some of the m people that open restaurants are men. Some of the cooks in restaurants, the most well-known cooks are men. Men been cooking since the beginning of time. Men probably invented cooking <laughs> right now. Is this something that I can give to you as a responsibility to help me focus on these things? Because when I'm single, I cook, I clean, or I hire Rosalinda. However, if you want to take on this task, this will allow me to focus on the bigger thing. It has nothing to do with men versus women. Now, if you want to be the big boss, ma'am, you could be the big boss and I'll be the guy. But I often know that that's not a good use of my time relationship wise because I'm still going to get blamed. Also, if you think this is going to be equal, you're in the wrong house. You're in the wrong house. There's no equal. I'm the big dog. You be the little dog. I'm the big joker. You the little joker. All right, that's how it's going to work. If you don't like it like that, go find somebody to be equal with. But in this case, cooking is a responsibility normally giving to women so that they don't have to focus and be distracted and or stressed about the big picture. Okay, while you're doing that, I can focus on the big picture so you're not stressed, so you're not chaotic, so you're not wondering how we're going to pay the bills, so you're not worried about the budgeting. I don't need you worried about the budgeting. Big dog got it. I'm going to take care of that. You focus on making me some nice salmon with a little bit of rice and some broccoli. I need you to focus on that. Don't worry about what we're doing over here. Everything taken care of. But 
They want to be too busy being nosy. They want to contribute. This is how you contribute. Focusing on this. This is how you distract yourself. Focus on this. Has nothing to do with male versus female or gender roles. And this is where niggas get it messed up. Okay? Niggas like this. This is where they get it messed up. This is where power comes. This is where women get it messed up. Because when this relationship implodes, and it most likely will, look at all these damn clothes everywhere. He can't even keep up with this mess. Okay? Look at this. This is a disgrace. I would never allow this in my house. Look. Look at this. This is a damn disgrace. I would never even let my clothes hit the floor like this. My clothes never go on the floor like this. If I saw somebody treat my clothes like this and I'm supposed to put these clothes on my back. All right, but this is where women get it messed up. Y'all trying to too busy being me and trying to keep up with the big dog. You ain't, you ain't the big dog. I'm the dude that makes it happen. I'm the captain of this ship. I'm numero uno primo. I'm the one making the sacrifice. I'm the one that's paying the bills. I'm the one that paid the cost to be the boss. I'm the ninja with his name on the marquee. I'm the star that you hit your wagon to. I am Himothy. I am the God of this house, according to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. I am the way, the truth, and the light in this house, but outside of this house, it is Jesus Christ himself. I am that dude. You follow me. You follow the order. You want no stress in an easy life. You do this. I do that. <laughs> right? It's easy. And when you do it, you take pride in the responsibility to do it so you can stop worrying about what the hell I'm doing. See, what you're doing, see these things here, they're trying to take equal responsibility, but they often have equal stress. What you don't want to do is worry about what I'm doing because me, I'm taking care of the big shit so that you don't have to worry about it. I got this shit. You take care of that. <laughs> it's simple. It's, but people don't want to play their role. So what they do is, well, I want you doing what I'm doing. Guys, they do this at work too. They do this at work. The boss is doing what they're doing. But then during the day, they want the boss to be doing what everybody else is doing. He don't know how to do the Excel spreadsheet. He don't need to know how to do the Excel spreadsheet. You supposed to do the Excel spreadsheet. That's why I got the money and hired you to do it. What would the boss do without me? He doesn't know how to open up a Word document. He doesn't need to know how to work up, work, open up a Word document. That's why I hired you. I could hire another monkey in here, but if you think your role is that important, try stress. Try sleepless nights. Try uh, dealing. The boss works on commissions and bonuses. Okay? Try investing into the business. Try pleasing the, st uh, the stock, um, the, um, the owners of the stock. Try pleasing the C-suite executives. See, you think you can do my job and you think I'm not doing a job because I'm not doing the menial shit that I hired you to do. That's why I hired you to do that so I don't have to worry about it. But try putting in your own money and skin in this game to keep this company afloat. Try raising funds with future investors. I bet you you can't do that. You can't do that. Try being on call 24-7. Try putting out fires. Try going to court representing the company when they're getting the pants sued off of them. The shareholders, that's what I meant. You see what I mean? These are the goofy shit that these little menial people try to bring you down. See, what I look at is this means bring brought down to her level to make this relationship work. The shareholders is what I meant. Couldn't think of it. So in order to make her feel happy and her postpartum depression not kick in, he got a full laundry. And the only reason he's doing it is to make this woman happy. All right. I'm not so happy. now I got to be brought down <laughs> when I'm the big dog. <laughs> I give the orders. I hire the people. I organize the company and I execute. By me doing this menial shit, if you can't handle it, woman, get out. By me doing this menial shit to make you happy, this is how an ungrateful woman ruins the potential of a good man. This is how an ungrateful woman ruins the potential of a good man. That man's too damn young to be thinking about making her happy, which is an impossible task. 
and he's wasting his opportunity in life trying to please her, which ain't going to happen. Look at her. She looks miserable. I'm not happy. <laughs> and she going to bounce at the end of the day, brothers. Trust me. The way they think it should work is the way of bizarro world. It doesn't work this way. Now, if she wants to be arguing about who's doing chores, well, get Rosalinda in here. But what I need to also do is have your ass in shape, too, because Rosalinda is going to take those tasks off your hands. And if I see cellulite around your booty, now I got some problem with you. All right. So you want to tell me what to do? Your ass better be on that damn Peloton by end of the night. All right, miss, I ain't got no chores. Rosalinda's going to handle it. I'm going to work hard. Rosalinda got it. She's going to help you out. But your ass better be in uh, yoga and your ass better be on that damn Pilates box and your ass better be in there kickboxing too. All right. If I see any any uh, excessive fat around your damn uh, gluteus maximus, we got a problem here. See, they don't want that responsibility. You don't want that responsibility, do you? I better have them leg, them legs better be shaved and that punani better be shaved up every time I reach for it. Oh, what? You know what I mean? See, they don't want to do it now. You don't want to do it now. I got you a maid. I got you a housekeeper, a nanny. I got your shit taken care of. Now you don't want to do what I need you to do. Hit the Peloton. Step on the scale. Oh, looks like you're two pounds up. You need to fix that, ma'am. <laughs> right? Anyway, look, but instead you got me folding clothes. Hey, man, that ain't going to happen. Now, you normal, regular ninjas, go ahead. You aim low and hit ass ninjas, you go ahead. If that makes you and your fat wife happy, go for it. But it will never happen on CGA's watch. And if any woman thinks they're going to bring me down to her level by doing these menial tasks without me focusing on the king shit, well, go ahead and uh, you're going to get to kick rocks. I mean, ninja is crazy. All right, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. These people are nuts. So she's supposed to be able to blow up like the Goodyear blimp, and I'm supposed to be here folding laundry? That sounds like a fair job. That's a fair exchange. <laughs> you get to be fat, and I get to fold clothes. Okay. We got it. <laughs> I lost out on an opportunity today. I could have made $1,000 today, but I didn't. I was folding clothes. <laughs> all right but if you just a regular normie and you just happy with life all right or you just really just going through life worried about the interest rate kicking your ass go ahead i mean listen i'm not i'm not everybody <laughs> anyway man oh lord let me get back to this one how about this one guys listen 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 this woman's gonna tell you what lo- what life is about she's gonna tell you here we go right here here we go I can't wait to experience a love I don't have to fight for. It just comes with ease and flow. A love that I don't have to convince. A love that I don't have to struggle for. A love that I don't have to be anything other than me for. I can't wait till I can fully love someone with all of me, without the fear of being hurt or taken advantage of. I can't wait to find a love that is patient, a love that is unconditional, a love that is selfless, a love that is kind and reassuring. I can't wait to find a love that's truly nested in God. When I find that love, I'm never gonna let it go. Oh, Jesus. And I know that he praying for me, just like I'm praying for him. Oh, Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my, oh my Lord Jesus, Jesus. Hey man, keep this woman away from me, man. Keep this woman away. Hey guys, I know, I know, brothers, she's a nice chocolatey woman, man. Ninja, if you step to this woman, this is gonna be a disaster. Ninja, this is a, this is a hopeless romantic. Brother, you cannot please this woman. This woman's gonna be un. First of all, I'm not happy. You know. <laughs> Brother, this woman's in La La Land. She too immature. She goofy. This is goofy. I know a lot of guys who know, like, oh, man, coach, I'm like, man, what about love? This woman's going to, you're going to ruin her life, and she's going to ruin yours. This is a catastrophe. It sounds nice on paper, but this woman will not find a guy that can measure up to this. 
right? She's going to be thinking that she's supposed to be forever in euphoria. She was like, mm, mm, I can't wait to feel it. Oh, please. Please, man. Listen, man. Hey, man. I'm going to hurt your feelings every now and then. It ain't going to be all lovey-dovey. And that only lasts for a certain period of time. This is a runaway from this woman. As soon as you hear this, man, and he out there somewhere, he praying for me. <laughs> Yo, man, this is what happens. You're going to fall for this, and it's going to be a disaster. She good looking, though. She definitely is. All right, she got that chocolate, man. She mixing that. She maxing out on it, and it's looking good. She got somewhat of a collarbone, but guys, this is a mess. This is a this is a trap. I can't wait to experience a love I don't have to fight for. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh no. Oh, a love you don't have to fight for. She ain't gonna do her job, man. She's not gonna take orders. <laughs> it just comes with ease and flow. Ease and flow. Oh, it's easy. Oh. Now, love is easy. It's just ease and flow. It's just going to come and it'll be there. Oh, yeah, it'll be there for about a year. I love that I don't have to convince. I love that I don't have to struggle for. Yeah, struggle love. Yep, no struggle love. I don't have to make a ninja love me. Uh, how old is this woman? All right, she about to reach that. She about to hit that wall. I love that I don't have to. Yeah. Be anything other than me for. Yep, I, just me. Just, hey, guys. Just me. No effort, no struggle, no work. I'm going to just show up. I'll just be me. It's the problem. I could just be me. I'm the table. I'm going to just be me. I can't wait till I can fully love someone uh -huh. with all of me without the fear, fear. of being hurt. I, I don't want no risk. No risk either. That means he's going to do what I say. Okay, continue. Or taking advantage of. Okay. I can't wait to find a love that is patient, a love that is unconditional. Uh, uh, unconditional, I'm going to be me, but no expectations. If I get fat, he'll still love me. If I don't do what I need him to do, he'll still love me. No conditions. Dude, this is like, th this is terrible, man. Anybody who talks like this, ninja, watch out, run. <laughs> love that is selfless. Selfless. A love that is kind and reassuring. Yeah, reassure me when I bring chaos. It's okay, baby. It's going to be all right. Uh, can you help fold me this laundry here, though? All right, what else you got on the list here? I can't wait to find a love that's truly nested in God. Oh, not Sky Daddy. Sky Daddy coming in now. Sky Daddy. All right, what, what Sky Daddy got to say? All right, here we go. When I find that love, I'm never going to let it go. False. She's going to ruin it. <laughs> when, when the love comes, of course, he's going to have to be six foot two, chiseled in stone abs he can't look like reuben stutter he can't be shorter than you he certainly has to be on your level lower but so there's conditions to this but it's just all on him and he's just gonna fall in love with you for doing absolutely nothing okay and i know that he praying for me just nope Nope. He's not praying for you he's praying to avoid you more than likely you don't qualify like continue continue it's like i'm praying for him Mm, 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 mm. Guys, right there. That's where he is over there. He up in there. He up in the clouds. <laughs> mm. Mm, mm, mm. Man, be careful out here, gentlemen. Be careful. It, they're setting you up for a disaster. Here we go. We got another one here. We got another one here. Italiano. Uh, this woman here. What does she have to say, gentlemen? She's going to give you a good deal. All right. This is a good deal here. Here we go. PSA for all of you men trying to date single moms. If you are not ready to play with what comes out of our boxes, you don't get to play with our boxes. That's what I said. Wow. Mm. Okay, so you ruined your life, and I'm supposed to just settle for this? Gotcha. Next. Next. And we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. Next, the rhythm, the rebel. All right, without a pause, I'm lowering my level. Okay, all right, here we go right here. We have a woman. This is a liberal woman. She's going to tell you 
why women shouldn't get married. Let me go ahead and set it up here. Uh, here she is right here. All the single girlies out there, if you have never been married and you're like, when's it going to happen for me? I just want you to get down on your hands and knees and thank God that it hasn't happened. Bitch. And I pray for your sake, it never fucking does. Especially if you are heterosexual, okay? If you're queer, fine. Let a thousand blossoms bloom. But if you are a straight woman, one, I'm so sorry, but two, oh my fucking God, do not marry a man. Here's the tea, ladies. Let me spill it out to you. Okay, single, unmarried women without children are the happiest subgroup of our entire society. Right. But people keep telling them like, no, you're actually sad and lonely. And until you get married, you won't be happy. And until you have kids, you won't be happy. And it's like, oh, I wonder who's peddling that lie. Oh yeah, it's the patriarchy. Guilty is charged. Yeah, f***ing again. But here's the tea. A single woman, she's like, Slayana, house down boots, mama. But the patriarchy doesn't f***ing want that for you because TBH, unless you're a wife or a mother, you're really of no f***ing value to the patriarchy. And so if you are single, don't be sad that you're not married. Be grateful that you haven't bought the web of lies that the fucking patriarchy has sold you and be glad it hasn't fucking happened for you because honestly it's nothing to aspire to it's this shit that we have put on a pedestal from like when people were marrying their cousins to keep their money in the family it's not for you i just want to say to all i don't give a fuck what you think bitch cut that bitch off next caller well Again, this is kind of the liberal, the liberal woman that women that we were talking about, right? So um, they tend to be anger, misandrous. They will call us all the patriarchy and misogyny, as we call it over here. They, they're gonna, they're gonna say all these things, and they're gonna be steeped in their hate of men, their hate of the system, their hate of the patriarchy. What they're gonna lose? They're gonna lose their sleigh. They won't be able to slay and enjoy life and travel on their own. All these things that they're gonna hit forty and then be like, well, that's you. And that's or you. 31 or wherever these ages are, they're eventually going to regret this down the line and hope you take a bad deal, a deal nobody other else is going to take. But they're going to say, love, they're going to turn into this woman right here. And they're going to say, um, yeah, I'm just looking for love. I have nothing else to offer, though. And plus, be unconditional. All right. Overlook all of my stuff, a.k.a. this woman right here. All right. Overlook the fact that I've had other men's children come out of my box. All right. Take this deal. Commit. Stop being scared. All right. There's no, there's, there's nothing around you. So these are the women that um, you have to avoid as well because as you elevate to the position you're going to elevate and she's done out here slaying, she's going to wonder and why. And that's you. No, we'll be a power couple and you'll fold clothes with us and you'll do all these things here. Be that guy. Where is it right here? Right there. Be, be that guy. What's wrong with it? And, I, and this woman here, his woman is older. She might, this woman might be older than him. She might be older. She might have been the woman that said slay queen and now. And that's you. Possibly. Well, if she's not older, she looks older. And every black man knows this. Every black man that dates interracially. Have you ever seen these couples? They have a beautiful mixed sister, right? As a child. All right, here's what happens here. This be the child right here. This be the woman, this be the mulatto that comes from a mixed race, like a black man with a white man, white woman or a Puerto Rican or an Asian. You've all seen these couples. And this be the child right here. And then when you see the mama and the daddy, it's a black man. He in good shape. He 45, 50, 55. He got muscles. He ain't all let go. He looks decent for his age. He handsome. And then you see the mother. She look like the mother of the father. <laughs> she don't look like the mother of the child. She looks like the mother of the dad. That is the father of the child. Tell me I ain't lying. Tell me I ain't lying. Because these, you know, the black man's genetics is pretty good. We be going long and hard. You know what I mean? Even if we look older, Ninjas can't really be like, really? Are you? <laughs> right? You be watching like, oh, your granny here. Oh, that's not my granny. That's my mom. Oh, that's your dad, right? That ain't your grandmama. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> be looking like the granny. All right. But uh, anyway, yeah, she looks like the mom of the husband. She don't look like the mom of the daughter. She looked like the mom of the husband. <laughs> Everybody know I ain't lying on that one. 
All right, anyway, man, watch out for that. Brothers, black black men, if you're 20 and 30 and you get with a you get a with a woman that is not a melanated queen, that woman's gonna age rapidly. You marry her at 32, 34, she's gonna age like a banana. And then you're gonna still look good and she's gonna look old. Hold on for a second. Let me pull up some examples just so I can touch on this real quick. <laughs> Listen, people are going to be bad at me for pulling this up. Uh, let's see here. All right, so th- this might not be the best example here. Here we go right here. This is, this is, this is Trey Young. All right, this is Trey Young. Trey Young, dad, look. Look at the face of Trey Young's daddy. Look at the mama. All right, right here. <laughs> Trey Young, dad, looked like he could go out there and still get him a bucket. You know, he don't got no rankles. Mom looking a little bit. All right, hold on for a second. That ain't that ain't the end. I'll do another one. I'll do another one. That wasn't that bad, but I'll do another one here. Hold on for a second. <laughs> All right, here we go, man. People going to be mad. Hold on for a second. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up here. See if I can. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. It, although, although the father does look old. Look at the mama out here. I'm just saying here, not the mama. I mean, dad looked like he's still athletic. Mama looking like, this is what mama looking like. Silence, you fool. Yeah, you know. I mean, the dude still look athletic. He in good shape. That's Blake Griffin. <laughs> Prayer is here. Hold on for a second here. Let me stop. All right. Oh, look, this is a better picture of you right here. This is a better picture. Okay, no, I'm going to wait. I'm away orders. Patrick Mahomes. Look, that the Google already know what I'm about to pull up. They already know what I'm looking. They already know. Oh, this is a good picture. This is this is a pretty decent picture right here. Okay, that this is Patrick Mahomes' daddy. Look at Patrick Mahomes. Look at Patrick Mahomes' dad. He looking handsome. He good in this little shiny suit. And mama about to hit that wall. She done hit it. She, she got that. She did clutch that wall right there quick. Right, dad still look like he might be able to go out there. You know, rah, rah, he got some energy and some life left. All right, mom looking like. Silence, you fool. This <laughs> just going to be bad. <laughs> oh. All right, man. All right, look, man, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Man, listen, I love everybody. I love everybody out here. I love everybody. Look, I love everybody. I just, you know. Just consider this. Take this into consideration, man. This is not, somebody said Drake parents. It's a fact. I'm telling you, man, this is a fact. Mm. All right, let me stop. <laughs> let's, get, let's get back to the show. Uh, Prager you. Here we go right here. <laughs> All right, Prager you right here. Let's go to it real quick. Why marriage is good for men. Get married today. This is an old video, but we're going to play it here. Fair use to Prager you. All right, they might be mad for me playing this video, but here we go. Marriage might have been fine for your parents or grandparents. Oh, oh, I got to take it down here. Here we go. But of what value is it today? Isn't it as more and more young people seem to be saying, just a piece of paper? Well, it turns out that piece of paper might be the most valuable thing you will ever own. Take the case of Doug Talby. At age 18, Talby worked a minimum wage job operating a press at a factory in Indiana and lived in his parents' basement. I didn't have a care in the world, Talby says. I didn't even have any bills. But after marrying at 19 and having kids, Talby's perspective changed. I had to step up and think about others and start taking care of them. Talby quit his factory job and joined the Army, where he made significantly more money and received housing and health care paid for by the military. Whenever he saw a chance of promotion, he pursued it. It meant more money and benefits for himself and his family. Recently, in a bid to further boost his family's income, he left the Army to work as a finance manager at a car dealership. He's now pulling in six figures. Men who see no need to marry or who are reluctant to marry until they make more money could benefit from Talby's discovery. All right, fair use, fair use. We got to pause it for fair use purposes. Uh, You see where this is going right here. All right, this is a PragerU video. We, the, the Manosphere already just crucified this maybe about seven years ago. 
uh, I thought I would bring it back for not a lot of people who know this. But as you can see here, this is the pitch. The pitch was beast of burden. The pitch was utility. Don't follow your dreams, all right? Be of use for everybody else. Now, I don't find this as a negative, but I find it a negative at what he's risking. Okay, so do these benefits far outweigh the risk when we know that most of these marriages do what? They're going to end that investment phase, all of that work and hustle, all of that work in the six figures, all of that's going to end in a bait and switch for the majority of these marriages. Some of it's going to end in alienation, uh, temporary restraining order, uh, the woman's playbook. Is the, my question is, is this risk worth it? Is the rewards that much greater? Let's listen to uh, Matt Walsh, and I'll come back to that video. The question is, what are young men, young people in general, supposed to do in the meantime? And this is where the red pill becomes more of a hazy, foggy, ambiguous pill. They have no answer. They simply shout about reforms that are needed, yet have nothing to say to the young men in our culture today who will be old, if not dead, Yo. by the time the system is fixed, if it's ever fixed at all. All right. So, hey, man, hey, don't don't worry about the system. <laughs> Listen, you worried about the system, man, the system ain't going to get fixed. Hell with it. Go get you a job. Go get you a wife. Fall in love. Get married so you don't be lonely and dead. The ninja said you're going to be dead and lonely. All right. By the time the system is fixed. um, Let's roll the dice, ninja. Hey, man, the system sucks. He acknowledges it. But it ain't going to get fixed. So why don't you go get married, ninja? All right. Here we go right here. I got a little bit more of him. All right. Here it is right here. Just go on and do it. What are these young men supposed to do right now? What kind of life would you have them lead right now, today? All right, you you asked for it, and I'll give it to you. We have the free agent lifestyle. Not only do we have that, Matt, ninjas can go overseas. Listen to this. Married, and the only way is through a selling process. The price for a girl is only one or $2,000. When an outsider, especially a man from another place, arrives, a large group of girls rushes to sell themselves, hoping to find a buyer quickly. Yeah, I mean, listen, guys are discovering that, okay, <laughs> all right, what are we supposed to do now? Get my passport, live the free agent lifestyle, go monk mode, MGTOW, rib. We are giving them the answer, but they don't want the answer. They don't like the answer. Again, you're not giving us solutions, and I give you a solution, and Matt Walsh starts looking like this. Matt Walsh looking like this with his lumberjack flannel on. All right, let's continue. Hey. The answer, it appears, is that an entire generation of young men, if not multiple generations, should skip marriage while we wait for the system to improve. But this is not a viable solution. It's not a solution at all. It's a surrender. You're asking entire generations to give up their bloodline, their legacy, their chance of finding the transcendent joy and meaning that family life can provide. All right. And so, Matt Walsh, I'll ask you, is this what we're doing? All the single girlies out there, if you have never been married and you're like, when's it going to happen for me? I just want you to get down on your hands and knees and thank God that it hasn't happened, bitch. And I pray for your sake it never fucking does. Yep. So that that's that's what we're picking from, Matt. We're also going to be folding clothes. Apparently here, just guys, just fold them clothes. All right. This is what we're going to be doing. These are our options, Matt. Yeah, just get married, right? Eventually, I'll have my clothes on the floor, too, all balled up with her granny panties all balled up. What else you got to say, sir? You're asking them to give up on themselves and on civilization itself. For thousands of years, human beings have always understood that their most basic purpose and obligation was to form families and have children. And yet you're telling these young men to ignore this calling and do what instead? Live for themselves alone, wasting away in front of screens? Oh, well, that sounds like, hey, man. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> Listen, live alone? Yeah, that sounds good, man. All right, he's irate, man. Let's go back to Prager U. Marriage has a transformative effect on the behavior, emotional health, and financial well-being of adults, especially men. Men who get married work harder and more strategically earn more money than their single peers from similar backgrounds. Wow. 
Hey, man, by the way, man, this video has gotten roasted like crazy. Even the conservatives is going crazy on this one. So let me get this straight. I have not been unfitting myself at all. I'm, I have not. The move you're making here, you're telling me to get married today because I'm going to work harder and more strategically. I'm going to earn more money than my single peers from similar backgrounds, but much of that money is not going to me. Much of that money is going to be set up into a future divorce, highly likely, and or go to everybody but me. All right, I'm doing the work not for me. I'm doing the work. Uh, listen, I don't mind this workhorse thing, but what am I getting back? Oh, I get the full clothes. All right, I'm going to do my own laundry too. All right, I got it. All right, because the, the modern women today aren't doing any of these things. So I'm going to work harder and strategically and come home and fold clothes. What do I get? I get to work harder. All right, let's go back. Let's give them a chance. Let's give them a chance. Marriage also transforms men's social world. They spend less time with friends and more time with family. What? <laughs> Wait. They literally made this video to get you to get married today. You spend less time with friends and more time with family. <laughs> Man, sign me up. <laughs> sign me up. All right, any other any other benefits, uh, sir? Uh, let me see here. Okay, no, no bars and clubs. Okay, okay. Uh oh, I get to work. Okay, all right, let's continue. They go to bars less and to church more. Oh. In the words of Nobel Prize winning economist George Akerlof, men settle down when they get married. If they fail to get married, they fail to settle down. My own research bears out Akerlof's view. Married men work about 400 hours more per year than single men with equivalent backgrounds. I thought this was, I thought this was to help us get married today. You haven't given me one benefit to myself. So we work harder. We work. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, the humanity. <laughs> and then the work that we do, we don't get the benefit from, nor do we go have fun either. Nope. No more fun. No more friends. No more traveling, no more puss, no more nothing. You just going to work, 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 and then not spend none of your money. What, what are we doing here, guys? All right, this is supposed to get me to get married today. All right, I'm trying to help my audience get married today. All right, let's continue. A Harvard study also found that married men were much less likely than their single peers to quit their current job unless they had another one lined up. All wait, wait, wait. What? Married men, I'm sorry, I have to pause this. Married men were much less likely to, than their single peers to quit their job unless they had another one lined up. So they're forced into labor because they got a family and a wife and mouth to feed. So when they hate their job, they can't quit. Mm. Guys, I actually had this scenario in my marriage. I literally was going to go off and start a business, follow my hopes and dreams, have all the money I wanted. And they, my wife's parents literally was talking me out of it. Nope, can't do that. A job is a job. And this job was plain bullshit. It's embarrassing how much I took that job for. Embarrassing for me to admit it today. But that job was paying peanuts. And it was like, just stay there at that job. So he can't leave a job, even if the job is bullshit. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's continue here. All right. Here we go. Right here. All this translates into a substantial marriage premium. On average, married men earn almost twenty percent more than their single peers. Twenty percent. All this for twenty extra percent. And who does that twenty percent go to? <laughs> who does this twenty percent? What is? Where's that extra twenty percent going to? Anybody, anybody, it ain't going to you. And that's you. It, it's all going to the family. You ain't going, but you put in the slave hours. You put in the hours of, you've traded the hours. You worked your ass off for an extra 20% and 
And guess what happened? You didn't see a damn dime out of it. And you got to hear her cotton picking mouth about you not folding clothes. <laughs> so let's continue here. This is real, y'all. This is real. That's even after controlling for differences in education, race, ethnicity, and other background factors. You can read more about this in my study, For Richer, For Poorer, How Family Structures Economic Success in America. Why is there such a substantial marriage premium? There are at least four important reasons. One, after marrying, men assume a new identity. Marriage is one of the last rites of passage into manhood remaining in our society, argue. Oh, my. I mean, wow. I mean, this is old hat. This does not apply today. Sociologist Stephen Nock, he found that marriage engenders an ethic of responsibility among men, as well as a newfound sense of meaning and status in the world. How does that benefit him? Is that a benefit to him or to others? Is that a benefit to him or to others? I would argue all of this is a benefit to others. And he doesn't get much benefit of this. This helps everybody else. Meaning that once I'm domesticated, I'm less likely to be violent to a person other than my spouse, unfortunately. All right. So I don't harm the world outside. I don't harm myself outside. I don't put people at, at risk outside. That's a benefit to everybody else. What is the benefit to him? He doesn't go to jail, potentially, sure. All right, uh, but um, let's continue. There wasn't much, it, it wasn't much benefit to him directly. It benefited everybody else. Let's continue. Two, married men are motivated to maximize their income. This means having a different attitude toward their job. Uh, there's the workhorse again. Why are they motivated to maximize their income? Because women going to spend 90% of their income. He's got to meet the needs. I don't mind this, but again, I must have equal and opposite responsibilities towards her. Again, how does that benefit him? It does not. The benefit goes to others again. Let's continue. They work more hours and make better work choices. Studies find that men increase their work hours after marrying and reduce their hours after divorcing. <laughs> this, this can't be real. Guys, they somebody pushed this out. Prager, you pushed this out. Guys, why do they do this? When they're single, they need less to survive on. I talked about that with uh, Joe Smith. When they divorce, they need less to survive on. Much of their income is going to child support and alimony. Then they live off far less. They're probably, when they get divorced, trying to make less so they don't get back taken to child support court. This is very obvious. And then when they live by themselves, they don't need as much of the bullshit that they needed to stay married. Then you have the married men that are just the workhorses, the slub, the working slaves. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is wild, man. Let's continue. Sociologist Elizabeth Gorman concludes that married men are more likely to value higher paying jobs there we go. than their single peers. There, I mean, there it is again. Ninja, just work, ninja. Where's the benefit? Let's continue. Three, there is evidence that employers prefer and promote men who are married. True. Married men are often seen as more responsible and yep. dedicated workers and are rewarded with more opportunities to advance. Uh, there's a reason for this, but this is true. The other reason is you're not going to leave your job so they can move you around and up without the risk of uh, losing you where a single man can just bounce. Okay, he don't have kids that are in school and a wife that has friends. They don't have a McMansion in the suburbs. So they know your ass stuck. You bought a house. Okay, you stuck. Your kids are in school. They in Little League. Okay, they going to high school next year. Stuck. Why would they promote the single male? Single male can bounce if you don't treat him right. The married man, again, is going to take mistreatment because he can't leave the job because he's got to feed the mouth. Let's continue. Fourth and finally, married men benefit from the advice and encouragement of their wives who have an obvious interest in their success. Oh, my Lord. You, man, where's Kevin Samuels? You cannot make this shit up. You cannot make. Let's go back. <laughs> Sorry, man. Four hours straight. What? They, who, whoever put this script together. They did not, must not realize the red pill existed back then because them, them MGTOW brothers, <laughs> all right, 
So he's a slave. Let's continue again. Fourth and finally, married men benefit from the advice and encouragement of their wives who have an obvious interest in their success. There is no better motivator than your spouse. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my. Oh, the humanity. Of course she benefits. She benefits if there's a divorce. She benefits directly if there's a marriage. She benefits by the investment. She benefits. And she's going to encourage you. Of course she is. Get your ass to work, ninja. My advice is you take your ass back to work. The tragedy is that despite all the good news we keep learning about the benefits of marriage, the institution is in retreat. In 1960, 72% of all adults ages 18 and older were married. Today, it's 49%. In 1960, the average age at which men married was 23. Today, it's 29. The consequences of this are negative across the income spectrum, but they are especially so for those in the lower and middle classes. Marriage is a clear path to a better life. It always has been. And now we have plenty of data to confirm it. But if you still don't believe me, just ask Doug Talby and millions like him. I'm Brad Bullcox. All but- right. Shout out to Brad. Guys, now you got to ask yourself. We've done plenty of streams on the non-benefits of marriage, staying single, uh, getting divorced, all of these things. The laws. You guys know the data and statistics. We don't need to go over it today. When you hear this type of stuff, this is complete absent-minded ignorance and not even responding to the dangers that men experience in their uh, uh, divorces, right? We, we actually, if, for the people who didn't see this earlier, we talked about this right here, which would be the uh, restraining order. Oh, okay, I can't find the clip. Right here, okay? The silver bullet theory, the silver bullet alienation, uh, TRO, divorce, um, or custody battle, child support. He didn't mention none of that. Man, that is crazy, but, hey, it is what it is. If you agree with that video, um, I might put a link in the description box, but you can look it up. Prager U. Um, Prager U is marriage good for men. And that was, their, that was their pledge to try to show you the benefits of marriage. Ladies, if you have any other benefits of marriage for men, gentlemen, if you have any other benefits that Prager U failed to cover in their propaganda, please list it here and then look at it as a risk-reward proposition. That's all I can tell you about that, man. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is unbelievable, right? That was unreal. But, uh, yeah, you can get married today. Get married today, guys. Just do it and find that chocolate assist to fall in love with. All right, let me get to the Super Chats. Thank you for enjoying the show. Hit the like button on the way out. We got, we got, um, hmm. The regular dude says, slowly but surely, the world is becoming the BW. And he says, speaking of history, you don't mess with Dane Calloway. Love Dane Calloway. Shout out to him. I like his history. It's actually, it's actually interesting. He's just here to make me think. I love Dane Calloway. Shout out to him. He probably don't agree with nothing I'm talking about, but uh, I like his channel. Right? He does make me think. Shout out to Catfish Tales. says, speaking of shuffling, what happened to Mr. Bojangles? Yep, just like what happens to a lot of these men who shuffle. I'm going to bring him back at some particular point. Shout out to Ada Nye, says Salute CGA. My, um, he says they're, they're, they are a distraction which leads to the mind drifting. Stick to your purpose in dreams, men, even in marriage, even in marriage. Um, if your wife is nagging you, she's distracting you. If your wife is texting you about stuff, what do you want for dinner and what you want, baby, just... I, you're you're responsible for it. I need you to take on this task with maturity. Deal with what you, and what are you going to do? Are you making dinner? We need to take out it, whatever. These are all distractions that you don't realize are affecting you long-term. You got to ditch people like this. I know people put up with these people when you're dating and you have this woman that just dumping on you drama-wise and making you panic because she women are panicky. They're fidgety by nature, by design. This actually helps them. It, it helps them because it helps them look after their young. It helps them stay focused on tasks and have to micromanage. They have to look, work over here and look and see if they're kids. They fidgety. Mm. The sky falling ass women. But I always tell fidgety women, I, you're not the right woman for me. If you fidgety, <laughs> all right, it ain't it for me. All right, I'm not here for all that shit. 
And what should I do? Met this chick, man, she was immediately trying to ask me about buying her car. Like she, well, not me buying a car for her, but she was going through the car buying process. I didn't know this woman. I hit them guts, but I didn't know this woman for longer than a week and a half. And she started texting me about, I'm buying a car. What about these three? And what do you think? Bitch. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. <laughs> Cut that bitch off. Right. Next caller. S sending me mad text messages about this car. I don't even know you. Like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> Fidgety, panicky ass. Just buy the car. It ain't going to make no difference in my life. But what will happen is I'll tell her to give her advice and she's going to do it and it ain't going to work out. Then she can pass that book. Pass that book. You made me buy it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Man, crazy. Yeah, lump. No, no, no. This is not a sugar baby. This is not a sugar baby. This was a mature business owning ass woman. All right. And I knew them right then and there why I'm at the JUCO. All right, because I gave a regular bitch a chance. I let a regular bitch come in. So that's why I would prefer to mentor younger women. Because this is an old broad giving me problems, right? They just only think I deal with sugar babies and, and juco. I deal with women of all ages. I got them all, all types. I just prefer the juco. And every day I step my ass out there in normie world, I find out real fast why I be at the JUCO, <laughs> right? Every day I step in normie world. Every day I deal with a normie broad, it just reminds me why I be at the JUCO. Because <laughs> normie broads are the worst. I've been untold, y'all. Normie broads are the worst. Y'all think these normie women are the ones in the lick and they got the best punani ninja. These normie broad ass women are the absolute worst. I can't deal with them seriously. I can't. <laughs> they try to run you right through the gamut, right down the aisle, right through engagement, right through taking you to weddings and shit. And they try to fly you in, meeting their friends. and Oh my goodness, man. Where did you go at? Where, take my ass right to the... Give me the Juco. <laughs> give me the Juco. Man, I ain't got no time for these normie... They the worst. They are the absolute worst, but of course it's free. And then they be just bothering you with all this bullshit. Human chihuahuas, yeah. They're super annoying. I'll be like, Damn, why I deal with this normie bitch? Because I thought, oh, okay, yeah. Let me get these guts real quick. Soon as you get it, here to come all the bullshit. They just rain down on you. Ah, oh, man, I'm at the JUCO, man. I ain't got no time for this shit. <laughs> they just be, oh, uh, nonstop questions. What you think about? What you like to do in the bedroom? Why you like this? You like the leg up? They texting you all this shit like, man, I'll see you. Just come over tonight. <laughs> I'll show you what I like in the bedroom. Why I got to text you the information? I like when you put your leg up. And then what you going to do? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to creep behind you and pull your hair back. Ooh, tell me more. And then I'm going to slap you on the ass like to see if you like it. Oh, yeah, really? And what else you like? Eh. Mm. What? What? And then afterwards, it's more bullshit. You going to sleep over tonight? Oh, my. No, I got to get up early for work. Why we never sleep over? Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Juco tomorrow. <laughs> Just Juco, ninja. I gotta, I'm done with you. Get the normies out of here. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. This is just wasted energy for me. It's just distracting. Tell me more. What else would you do? And then I'm up. Then I'm a, I'm gonna put your toes in my mouth. And then what you gonna do with it? I'm gonna put whipped cream and strawberries on it. And then what? And I'm going to tie you up. And I'm going to put a blindfold on your eyes. Why do I got to type this out? <laughs> Typing all this out. All right, man, just bring your ass over here. Let me start doing it to you. Just crazy. And then they're going to screenshot it. And then they're going to show it to their friends. Their normie friends. Look what he texted me. Look. Mm -hmm. And he texted me a voice memo of him busting a nut. Mm -hmm. And listen to it. Listen, girls. All right. And he sent me a picture of his salami. Look. Look, you see, you see, oh, 
Jesus. Miserable. <laughs> yep, all her old turkey neck ass friends. Look, look at what this guy, look at him. There he is. There's his pictures right there. Look, 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 look. That's him right there. And this is what he said. He said this, look. <laughs> this is like. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I don't have no time for these normie bras, man. Anyway. And their friends like, you think, <laughs> right? All right. You think I could get with him too? Mm, I don't want to share him. And just bring the broad over. I'll share her. Bring her over too. I'll dust both of y'all asses off. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. This is crazy. What are we doing here? Yep. They be taking pictures of you sleeping. These are the type of Nori bras. Man. I can't stand Nori women. They just so goofy to me. All right, shout out to Kevin W. Says another benefit to marriage is, oh, wow, my phone yeah, deleted it. Shout out to you. You can't, you can't, you couldn't put it out there. Not many benefits. <laughs> Not many benefits right here, man. Shout out to Rusted Junk. We're going to get to everybody here because I do have an errand. I got to run. Shout out to Rusted Junk. The morning, my, this morning, my bar barber told me that he had a morning blowout with his wife. And during the argument, he taught, he thought of me and the fact that that I don't deal with this bullshit. Shout out to UCGA free agent lifestyle for life. <laughs> yep. The morning argument with the wife. Now he at the barbershop stressing. <laughs> See that stuff. I don't want to deal with no more. I've, hey, I've been there, done that. Been there, done that. It's not that I can't deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. Now she on a pissy mood. Now she sent me to work in a pissy mood in a, in a, and my balls full of semen. Now I got to go look at my secretary. All right. Shout out to who is this in here? Shout out to Vizito. Says coach marriage for men. The first time it is equivalent to the virginity of a woman. Picking who you give it to is serious. After that, indeed, it's straight jacking. Straight jack. Yeah, you got to be very hyper vigilant. It's, it's literally like giving your virginity to a woman. You're putting you're putting your life in her hands. Shout out to no government name coach. I believe you pay for the cooperation and submission you receive from women giving cash, paying for things, et cetera. Do you agree? That would be, yeah. I mean, I find that when that is the agreement, I don't deal with bullshit. You're getting rid of that. You, you guys, they're way more cooperative when you going forward like that. And I don't, you don't have to beat it into them. And what guys think is you got to convince your woman to be submissive. You got to beat it into her. You got to you gotta make her understand. You guys think women are dumb. Women are not dumb. It's misogynist to think a woman's dumb. I think they're very smart, crafty, manipulative, and cunning. Right? With that, they're smart. They're smart. They know what you asking. They just don't want to do it because they don't see an incentive to do it. What they're saying is, why should I submit to you? Why should I serve you? They're not saying they don't want to do it. They saying, why? Why? Why do I want to do it? You got to give them a reason why. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's you're the best option they can have. They still going to screw that up. They need to know why, not what. <laughs> right? And then when they don't want to do it, they're a stubborn mule. You're with the wrong woman. And you're asking the wrong woman to do something or you're not incentivizing her. And, it, and I'm not just mean money. You're, she's just digging her heels into the ground. That's all she's doing. She's not, not understanding. She just doesn't see what the incentive is. Why would I do that? Why would I cook for you if you still going to bounce on me? Which I understand as a woman. Because women will say for a woman has to cook for you. And then she'll come over and cook for you and still get kicked to the curb. Right. So a lot of women be like, hey, I cooked for a dude before and I made his ass street tacos and I, I made it from scratch and I made the tortilla straight out of flour balls and boom, kick my ass to the curb. So that didn't help. And I cannot disagree with that because women have cooked for me and I kicked their ass to the curb like the rest of them. So anyway. <laughs> mm. All right. C3 Daryl says 20 percent more, but. 
She takes half and the government takes the other half. Facts. All right, shout out to Justice Says Thanks, CGA, 100%. Shout out to uh, David Brown. Money is just cost turned into physical objects. Yep, it's just cost. That's all it is. Then just think money is all of this other stuff. You just take money, turn it into something physical. It is. <laughs> all right, shout out to our brother. Now, I'll remind him again, no government name. Thank you for the sponsorship right here. All right, shout out to Joshua Moon. Says another great show, Coach. Gratitude. Thank you, sir. Shout out to uh, what we got here, 2K Teacher. Says, trust me, I paid with my sisters and mother. What a cost, Coach. And women have never been free. Even Eve cost Adam literally everything. And then just think women are free. Give them the buzzer, Coach. Yep, your mama, when she grow older, you're going to find out she costs a lot of money. Ninja going to be spending $10,000 a month. To keep your mama alive. It ain't going to be free. Nothing's free, man. And you're going to realize why your mother loved you so much. Because she knew her life was going to come to an end. And you're going to have to pay for it, you goofy ninja. All right. Or her husband. Her husband was. But if she ain't got no husband, guess who's paying to keep her alive? You. Ha, 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 ha. Staying alive. Your mother going to drop your mother gonna drop your bank account. And she ain't going gonna to be elderly as fuck. She ain't going to contribute zero to it, especially if she's a boomer parent. She ain't got no money. So, Ninja, you're going to be paying. <laughs> Your mama going to recover all that cost. Shout out to Managing Life's Risks. O-T-O-B-O, American women are indeed lazy as F. My mother raised all six kids in Nigeria, including me. He says, our house never looked that messy. They're really entitled. And American women, I think American women, just to not talk negative about them, Gentlemen are a bad bunch. They're corrupted. I, I, I just think they don't, they feel like there's no, they have no necessity to cooperate. And so, especially liberal ones. So that's what you're getting. You're getting this corrupted spirit. Mr. Ramos says, what's up, coach? Just a small donation for my favorite African-American going towards the feet picture fund. Yeah. Fear or none, shout out to you doubling up. Brown 310 says, rest in peace to the gums getting married out here. Indeed. Angry Heretic says, Prager, you knows that the majority of men have to be foolish enough to get married for society to work. And that's a fact, right? Society works with married men, all right? It's, it's selfish of us to not contribute to this, but they don't consider how to help us out, incentivize us getting married. That's what we're missing. They don't change the laws. They don't help change it. They don't move the needle. When you get divorced, you're floundering out there. You're homeless. You're a drug addict. You lose your kids. They don't seem to help then, but they want to help you cross the line. See, that's what I messed up about. I'll take those things as a sense of responsibility. But then when I get a temporary restraining order and I lose my kids and I have to pay child support for losing my kids, where they at? They gone. They ain't saying nothing then which is that's my problem. Why don't you help the men? Where the men, where's the help for the men when this shit don't work out? Because you suggested that I do it. Joshua Moon says, another great show, Coach. Gratitude. I think I got everybody, man. And I got a rushed afternoon, man. I'm already late to an appointment. But you guys are more important than that appointment. I got a ninja waiting on me right now, and he probably irate. With that being said, Shout out, well, it's a ninja doing work for me. It's not no fudge packing stuff. I need to clear that up. He's waiting for me to drop off something, and it ain't, he's waiting for me to drop off my car to do some work. I got to clear that shit up. You like a ninja waiting for you? Wait a minute, what is this shit right here? Ninja, what? I thought you wasn't. All right, but I had to clear that up right there. Ninja's going to be leaving the stream. Wait a minute, coach. What did you say? Wait a minute. (laughs) Who are you? Pause. He's doing some work on my vehicle. Everybody got it. All right. Shout out to y'all. Damn, Daddy. Shout out to y'all, man. Do me a favor. Hit the like button on the way out. Pause. And we'll be back this evening for evening service. We out of here. Peace.
barbecue in there. 